everybody to the Making Awesome Podcast. This is episode 175, and we're joined by your favorite Canuck creator, Mr. Nero 3D. Nero, tell the folks at home that don't, for some reason, already know who you are, who you are, what you do, and why you're awesome. Okay, first I'm here. One second. I'm hearing myself, so let me oh, correct no, that that's because the, worst. The, the voices, the voices have gotten to me finally. Oh no! Um, hi, I'm I'm Nero 3D, uh, the Canuck creator, as you can see right here. As my total my branding is still being worked on. Um, I I build printers. I live stream. I do random stuff on the internet, um, mostly involving 3D printing stuff. Although I'm branching out into FPV, uh, CNC. I even have a Twitch gaming channel now. Um, but yeah, I'm just you know. Yeah, you, if you know Grant, you probably know me already. Uh, so, when do we get I mean, a full Nero Uwu gaming streamer? Uwu, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna get clipped, buddy. You you did it to oh, yourself. Probably. You did I, it to probably. Yourself. <laughs> um, I I already got a, 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 a it, it gaming Twitch is kind of boring at times. Like mm -hmm. I, I it's it's something to keep me busy on down days. Yeah. Um, but now that I'm doing more videos on the channel, I have less downtime. So it used to be when I was streaming a lot last year and I wasn't doing videos, I had more time to just, because, you know, I'm only working when I'm live, you know, I'm working quite often. Be surprised how much work goes oh, into yeah. a YouTube channel. Um, we could talk but, about that a little bit later on. Yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> but um, now that I'm doing more videos on the channel, the uh, the streaming is kind of, yeah. I need cat ears for it. I do. So these are the head of mames. Yeah. So I'm one of those people I things that i promote i actually use so these are head of mames. these are my daily driver headphones i use these every day and they have these little tabs here to hold the little band on and i'm surprised somebody hasn't made a cat ear version of them yet well, we have it, so, the moment ears, someone does that count <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the moment somebody does i'll print them and put them on here but uh oh damn it yeah. now now i mentioned her now she's now she's embarrassed she's gonna get up and go away now <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, we're going to be talking all about product testing because you and I have kind of been in the same groups for a little bit now where, uh, you know, between X1 Plus, the Magneto X and a couple of other things, product testing is kind of what separates the men from the boys, if you will, for lack of a more gender neutral term. But, you know, something to where you can basically have a group of people that are beta testing a product to validate whether or not it's going to do well. We recently saw a product that had, let, let's go with less than perfect um, product testing and was the part of a recall. So I think it makes sense for us to talk about what is good product testing. Then we can kind of talk about what can go wrong during product testing. So with, with product testing, so for a bit of background, just so I can, you know, I, I don't, you should never start an ex, you should never start an explanation by going as an X. So like, if you ever leave a comment on a YouTube video, cause you disagree with something, never start as an engineer, mm -hmm. because then you're coming from a position of authority, not knowledge. So yeah. as a former <laughs> injection mold maker, <laughs> um, I do have some experience in professional life and develop like we I, I built tools where pretty much everything was a one off. So we were testing it as we were building it. But in terms of 3D printing, um, for those that don't know, I am involved on the Voron design team as to what I do nowadays on the Voron design team. That's a very good question. Um, but back in the day before I was a YouTuber, I spent a lot of time helping test Voron designs. Mm -hmm. So that, that was kind of my thing on the team is I was the guy who was printing stuff as soon as a part got revised and, and was testing it. I put a lot of hours on it. Um, and I've built pretty much every Voron that exists at pretty much every iteration of pretty much every Voron that has existed, um, except for a legacy. So it, it's, it, it's been like. I what is the question again? <laughs> what it's like being a product tester. <laughs> so it, it, it's one of those things that you just kind of it, it you can write it down on like this is how you do product testing, but a lot of it just comes from experience, just right fiddling around with it, figuring out what works. Like I I have a way of testing printers that's different than other people, uh, because I approach it in a more practical aspect. Um, I, I'm more concerned about fit and functionality of the machine and not whether it can print a 69.8 degree overhang perfectly compared mm -hmm. to another machine. Mm -hmm. I'm more concerned of how easy the machine is to use, um, how how is it more reliable long term. I tend to find printers that I like using and I'll stick with them for a while 
Um, so I don't really cycle my main use printers often because, hey, these have been working for so long, I'm very hesitant to change them. Right. Um, but that means those printers have a ton of testing on them. So, for example, um, if I can get my DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor work, wow. See, even, even, oh, there we go. There we go. If I can get this working, uh, this week's video is actually going to be a, a long term revisit of the X1C because I have to do some maintenance on it because it's broken. Um, and, you know, it's, I'm going to talk about some of the things as I open it up and go through it. Like, hey, this is stuff like, you, you don't find some issues you don't find until you have thousands of hours on a machine. It's loading. Yeah, it's loading. Looks, like, lo looks like the stream just went down. God bless internet. <laughs> It should be coming right back up. Yeah, we were dang Florida internet. That that's right. That's right. We should be back up. Yeah, we're back up. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Worst comes to worst, we'll just hop over to my channel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that fixes the internet problem. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I'll be here still because I got fiber. <laughs> oh well, damn it. Yeah. One gig up, one gig down, man. Should have. Should have. Um, God, you know that's. I'm jealous. It's it's nice. It's nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm jealous. So um, a good example of testing history is the Voron V2 series. So the V2.4 has been pretty much feature complete now for two or three years. Like it's been stable. Yeah, there's been updates. There's been some revisions to it. Stealth mm -hmm. burner tap, stuff like that. But the, the, the meat and potatoes of that printer has been solid. However, it took time getting there. Um, if not many people were around in the V2.0 days, um, uh, my oldest V2 is V2 serial number 26. I believe the highest Damn. serial number for a V2.0 was 48-ish. It was like close to 50 V2.0s okay. before we moved to 2.1. V2.0 failed at a couple hundred hours easily. Interesting. Um, there, were, there, were, there were printed bearings or printed uh, tooth idlers. So you would print the uh, gears and then yeah. you'd snap F623 bearings in them. Yeah, yeah. And that was your XY idler. Um, so Why? you had those. We had the XY joint didn't have a top hat. It was just a bottom piece uh, with um, you would screw in through the bearing into the plastic. It's like, oh, it's a 40 millimeter screw going, you know, 30 millimeters into plastic. Nope. Those canted over after a while. Um, the AB motor mounts were belt coffins, which, by the way, VZ bot, you're still using belt coffins. Don't use belt coffins. Um, so belt coffins, which means like the, the belt goes into the coffin and you don't see it and it dies in there. And if you have to re rebelt it because the you know your little printed bearing exploded, um, you you had to pretty much disassemble the entire gantry. It was it was horrible. Um, so if you're wondering why we had those printed ones, it's because back then, uh, smaller ID uh, tooth bearings exploded all the time. They used little pin needle bearings, and when you needed a three millimeter ID pin needle bearing, um for tooth idler, they were just garbage. The quality of them was garbage. They exploded left and right. So that's why it was moved to a printed tooth idler with a F623 bearing in it because it was bigger. So anyways, right, right. Um, so V2.0, you would build it. It would print great, but then bearings would start exploding. You would, pr the printed parts would explode. The 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 idlers were cant over. Um, also, the crossbar in the front was super annoying. Um, huh. So it was a good, you know, first try. But it was definitely like, you know, it started failing in a couple hundred hours. And we didn't know that until people started building these machines and started getting a couple hundred hours on them. Right. It's kind um, of hard just to test that stuff over and over and over again when the kind of goal of the Voron project is to continually iterate, right? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, it's a little bit different when it's a project where you have to build it all yourself right you, you you generally can't just go buy an off the shelf kit for a voron unless you you know are somehow a part of the printed forward program or you buy one of the clones that happens to come with everything that you're looking for otherwise you're pretty much doing it 100% yourself which means oh yeah there's tons of of upgrades like i was riding the struggle bus on that trident to get the stupid belts around those front eyelids. Everyone's like, print the BIF or B B BFI? I don't know. It, it, it's the, the new front idlers. And um, I said, I, I don't want to do that because I want to do the upgrades slowly rather than do them oh. all at once, right? Because it makes more sense to try to have a close to stock experience then go ahead and, uh, you know, change it out. But I, I'm like, I was so pissed off. I'm like, if, if we had a little hole to push an Allen key through to help move the belt through, it would have worked. Someone said to use a uh, 
a zip tie. I still have no yep. idea what, how to do okay. the zip tie thing. So how do you do the zip I tie trick? It, really I, I, I just took the damn idler off, which is how I actually oh, did that. it. It was m- much better. But how do you do the <laughs> damn zip tie thing? Okay, so the zip tie, you, you shove the zip tie in, mm-hmm. and it basically creates the wall that so when so you got your you got you got your bearing yeah okay and the belt's got to go around the bearing yeah so you're pushing the belt through and it, it wants to go off into this direction it does the, yeah there so what you do is you shove in a zip tie from this side and it mm-hmm. kind of like rounds the corner so when the you shove the belt tie- in ah. it rides against the zip tie got it or what you can also do in some cases if you can push a zip tie through you can just tape the belt to it and then pull the zip tie up which That's is the other which is it. what i thought everybody wanted me to do and then i started doing that you can said, do no, in no, some no, no, locations no. but other times you use the zip tie as a guide so i just rebuilt uh my tall oh, boy man. using the uh the beefy please beefy idlers uh the zed and the uh front idlers it's yeah. so much better so yeah. much better okay um yeah um so that was V2.0. So V2.1 took everything that we learned from V2.0 and redid it. And the thing is, it wasn't failing at a couple hundred hours. It would start failing at a couple thousand hours. Um, the big thing with 2.1 was um, we had a lot of bearing stacks. So we had idlers that were like, you would have the GT2 gear that you would normally put on a motor would sit on a pin and then that pin would be constrained in two bearings because we wanted to move away from exploding bearings because this is back when, you know, tooth idlers kind of sucked and pin bearings exploded all the time. So um, there was that. Uh, the belts, the, or the drag chains. The drag chains have been a point of contention with Vorons for a while. So 2.1 used zip chain, or correction, no, tape chain, which I was actually the original beta tester for, my 2.0 head. So you take a tape measure, oh. you cut the tape measure, you run your wires against it. You wrap the tape measure and test the tape. You run the wires against it, and then you put a sleeve over it. And it works really good until it starts destroying your wires at a couple thousand hours. Yeah, that... And this was back in the day before <laughs> silicon wires and PTFE wires, where we were still using Cat5, because we all watched that video from Tom Salam... Salam... Shout, Shout 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 <laughs> um, I, I, I made with layers. Um, it's now made with layers, because he realizes we all suck at that. <laughs> I know. Tom Sandlatterer. Sand ladder or sand, anyways, sand Tom, Tom S. <laughs> Tom, uh, he made a video ages ago <laughs> about how to wire up your printer and use Cat5. And everyone used Cat5 back in the day. If you were around it's in true. the early days, everyone used Cat5. It, it, it was it came easy, printer. it was easy, it color coded, it was already twisted in pairs. It was great yeah, for everything did, but hot ends. It, it did um, everything for us that we notoriously got wrong, yeah. Right? And the thing was, it worked okay in an umbilical. Yeah. The moment you shove that into a drag chain, though, no or chance. any sort of thing like that, it would destroy itself. And we didn't find that out for a while. The copper so we switched was fatigue. To... Yep. Which we're going to talk about later. <laughs> yeah. And then you, and then we switched to silicone wire, and the, just the friction of the Tessa tape and the loom and whatnot would eventually wear through. And then, so like we we learned stuff on two point one that led to two point two. Now two point two was actually a really solid printer. The problem is it got really complicated for anyone who had built a Voron 2.2. Mm-hmm. It was it, it kind of got into recursive hell in terms of like because it was based on 2.1, which was based on 2.0. Um, so what 2.4 is, imagine we took everything that 2.1 that we learned getting to 2.1 and then threw out the CAD and started from scratch. That's why there's no Voron 2.3. There was a 2.3 in development, but 2.3 was based on 2.2. And so we're like, scrap it, start over because start over. It it is, it is sometimes easier to just quite literally throw it all away, rebuild the manual, rebuild all the parts without considering previous iterations because those previous iterations failed for reasons that if you keep trying to put a bandaid over the hemorrhage, you don't solve the problem. You just kind of close the wound for a little bit, hoping that it disappears and it traditionally doesn't. And also the big thing too from 2.2 to 2.4 was one we got the direct feed tool head mm-hmm. with uh, afterburner now stealth burner because before that Bo- uh, vorons were Bowden. Um, and two was the uh, simplification of the bomb. One of the yep. big goals of 2.4 was to try and get the cost down and also simplify the bomb because it was getting pretty crazy in terms of like bearing counts and shit like that. So 2.4 was basically everything we've learned from you know years of working on the V2 platform and then hey let's like start over but with everything we've learned and it came out as 2.4 which has been for all intents and purposes feature complete yeah there's been updates but yeah small now ones. The thi- small ones 
Um, but in revisions and there's add-ons now like tap and stealth burner, but you don't have to do those if you don't want. There's there, and there's all the open or the alternatives now. You got clicky, yeah. beacon probes, you got, you know, people have made it a tool changer, like there's all that. But like the 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 original like feature complete stock v2.4 is a proven motion system um that we're quite happy with um but that's just the 2.4 there's also the v1 series which is now the trident line there's the v0 which has had three revisions um or three so for those that don't know the names of orons how it works um the, the V2 pain in the ass. is the name of the printer. You ha- think of it like a BMW. You have like the the numbers are the name of the car, not the revision of the car. So you got the M3, the M4, the M5, whatever whatever BMW does. So the when you have a point and a number, that's the the I guess it wouldn't be the revision because there's now revision, but that's the right. model. So you got a V2, the first iteration, second iteration, now fourth iteration technically. And then you have the revision. Um, so like that's why Trident isn't a V1 anymore, because everyone's like, why would I build a V1 when the V2 is out? It's like, no, they're completely different machines. Yeah, but this is version two. No, it's not version two. It's the V2. Um, so that's why Vorons have kind of switched to naming stuff now. It makes it easier. Um, it, it does. Because, right? Because, well, they don't. Um, they don't. So that's why it's now V0 is staying V0. V2 is kind of just iconic as V2 now. It's the most built Voron. Um, V0 makes sense, and then V1 is now Trident, and then we have Switchwire, which is kind of the redheaded stepchild of the Vorons. That but it, it looks doesn't like really it could be fun. In. It's a fun machine. I have one. I don't use it hey. ever. It, I've, I've ripped. I've I've scavenged it for a few parts here and there. Oh no. Um, I don't think it has a hot end in it right now or a Raspberry Pi. Um, but like, it's a fun machine. It's a good Ender conversion. A lot of people convert Enders into them. Um, which makes yeah, sense because it's it's a, it, it, it's a Cartesian ish yeah. build platform so the thing is with testing we kind of have to rely on if you for how internals work with the voron a lot of times we have stuff ready to go like i had a v2 half a year before or a v2.4 like half a year before 2.4 was announced mm-hmm. um a lot of the time we have we spend months of internal testing yeah. because we kind of have to because we have a smaller team we don't have company financials backing it how large um, is the voron design team by the way Okay, so here's the thing. We're we're currently work reworking on that. Um, because the team has kind of grown, but not grown, but has grown quite a bit. Um, if you go in like the Voron Discord and look at anyone who's an admin or is an has the engineer tag, mm-hmm. you could consider them the core Voron team. But anyone who's also on the crew helps out. It we're we're currently like reworking the whole like hierarchy and who is because kind of anyone with a crew is technically like is read in on the team so like they get to participate in like the cool super secret stuff um behind the closed doors but like they're they may or may not be actively contributing they might just be somebody in the community who was like you know a really active tester who we want their feedback or they made um some people like the you know uh the Micron, Hart K, he, he made the Micron. It's like, oh, that shit's cool. Welcome to the team. Like, and sometimes it's just, oh, you're a helpful member of the community. You, you don't apply to the Voron team. There's no application process. It's literally, we go, oh, hey, that person's cool. Come join the team. Um, mm-hmm. So we occasionally get people like, I want to join the team. I want to join the team. It's like, you, you don't join the team. You get invited to the team. Right. Um, but last I checked, technically <clears throat> there's like 70 something people in crew, but that's obviously not like the actual size of the team. It's that's a pretty big like, team. Yeah. But that's not like that's just people who have the crew. We've given out a lot of people crew over the last little bit Um, because development has actually kind of slowed down on a lot of stuff because people have gone like the V2 is feature complete. Right. The Trident's pretty much a V2 with a moving bed. Right. That's the same exact. By the way, so if you build a, a Trident, the gantry on a V2 is exactly the same. The only difference is it moves. Um, oh, well, that's so those two machines. Are, yeah, those two, two machines are extremely similar. The Wait, only so difference, but am I going to get attacked by by the frame on a V two when I build it as well? But actually, probably no, because it's just a square. Okay, so you you probably wouldn't have. I think what you were installing doesn't exist on the V two, so you might be okay. Okay, good, because you know it. So. I I felt attacked. The, now the frame is red. You know, if you go back, the frame was silver. It wasn't actually silver, <laughs> but the frame was red. It, it, it got a taste of blood. It, it wanted blood. Dude, it, this, where is it on my arm? Ah, camera's backwards. I burnt, there. My, I burnt myself on the anet the other day. That was so. from two, that was from 
two weeks ago. It's still there oh, from, from when I got cut on the day. I mean, I, I, I feel like sometimes, you know, product testing can be a bit of pain, <laughs> right? It can be a bit of pain. Oh, dang it. there is no Band-Aid emote. What? No, oh, there is. There is. There you go. Everyone, Band-Aid's in chat for Grant. Everyone, Band-Aid's in chat for Grant. Nothing. It just, it just, you just typed Band-Aid. Oh, you got slow mode on. No. Nope. got slow mode on. Oh, well, it, it, it's for there shouldn't be slow mode it should just be for people that aren't there we subscribed. go there we go band-aids in chat oh there's the band-aids okay it's not slow mo dude it takes a little bit for it to update <laughs> um oh there is so a god the oh damn it the, so that's the thing with voron is up until extremely recently like for anyone who got into voron during the pandemic which is when we saw our biggest growth because everyone was locked inside and you know had to spend their vacation money on something um before that, it was all self-sourced, DIY, mm -hmm. no kits, nothing. Like there before the 2.4, there was no Voron kits. Like now we have kits. We're spoiled nowadays. But because yeah. we have kits, we have companies that actually do revision testing now. Right. So back in the day, we had to just rely on us building the printers, putting a ton of hours on them and seeing what breaks. So that kind of has led to my testing method of printers, which is just throw as much shit at it for as long as I can. Mm-hmm make sure it works and then start fiddling with like profiles and whatnot because um the news flash is pretty much any printer prints good nowadays like That's i true. really don't I, I there's a reason i don't do printer reviews is because they're they're pointless in my opinion they're they it it's completely pointless it's like hey guys do i have a i, I gotta have a 3d print in here somewhere yeah one second yeah ah, and for go. everybody having stream issues I'm sorry. Okay. Welcome to welcome to being in rural Florida there. And it's been pouring rain for 24 hours. There's nothing that I can oh. do about it. If you're having issues, just reload the stream. Give us a like if you don't mind while you're at it. I know some of you are leaving. There's nothing that we can do about it. Welcome. Welcome. Is it, to is it that bad? It, it seems so on my end. Uh, we're, I mean, we're dropping about four to five percent. I think some people just don't realize that if you refresh, it fixes oh. every problem. Um, yeah. So whatever, because you're fine on my I haven't lost you on my end. No, but um, yeah, you and you and I have a direct connection. We're fine. Um, yeah. and, and that's why I use Zoom, because Zoom creates a direct connection, same way that Discord does. Uh, so even if I lose Internet, as long as we are still connected and I still have some packet travel, you and I will still stay up. It just won't be up for them. OK, so so just to put in perspective here, like. Well, this is why I don't test printers. Okay. Um, I think this is the right button. Nope, that is not the right button. <laughs> one second here. I've All got right. the only one. Nope, that's there OBS. Yeah, or is no, that that's intended? OBS. No, that is not the right one. Okay. Uh, one second here. Let me let me do this. Uh there we go okay there's that so if i do that i don't know why it why are you showing obs it's showing obs Wait. yeah <laughs> oh it's showing the wrong monitor that's why there we uh... go primary monitor there we go okay so this right here is an e3d buggy okay it's a little it's a little stringy but guess what a anytime uh 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 or the filament <laughs> It has absolutely nothing to do with the printer itself. Right. Most of the time. Very rarely. Some nozzles are a little bad at picking up stringies. But this is, this is I had the filament was too hot and Zed hop. Newsflash, that has nothing to do with the printer. So if you, like, it, it's it's too easy to just pull the printer out of the box and print the demo models with the demo or the, the stock profile and judge the printer based on that, which is not not something you do. That That is not the right way to do it. Um, but this is an E3D buggy printed on a bone stock ANET A8 at double the speed of the stock Cura profile. Um, I don't bad. know about you. That looks like a fine buggy. The overhangs are pretty good. Yeah, you got some moire there and some weird artifacting from the uh, ancient, yeah, you know, Soviet bad. tractor drivers in it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it could be a little bit better with some part cooling and a little, you know, some tuning or some retractions. But let's be honest. This is a, this is a perfectly fine print. Yeah. Like for little Timmy who's printing random shit. Now, granted, the A net A8 is a I would never personally buy one. Um, it, it's out completely outdated and it's the quality of life and using it is horrendous. Um, 
but that's the thing with a printer. It's so hard to test. So when I test printers, I just throw prints on them. I get hours on my machine. I want right. to see how it does long term. Like the the Magneto X, the first thing I did, I I, I did a, a quick confirmation print that it actually works and printed like a Benchy. And the next thing I did was throw a full Mandalorian helmet on it, and then printed a full Z height uh, tower. And then like I printed something that was a, that took up the whole bed. And what did I do with those prints? I think half of them are in the garbage already. Like because I just. I just want to get hours on that machine yep. because certain things you don't know until you have hours on a machine. Like our friends over at Bamboo have found out. Um, you can come out with a great design that works great in the lab and you you print a few things and you go, holy shit, this is good. Ship it. Um, with Voron, we had that issue where we would test stuff internally and then we would put the printer out and people would build it. And then a, a huge thing with us is printed parts. The amount of people that have Voron taps that explode and then they blame the design. And it's like, you look at the prints. It's like, no dog, you printed that ABS like shit. You have no layer adhesion. The part's way too brittle. Um, That ain't us. That's, I have to laugh a little print. bit because I Cause guess that I happens printed, all the time. I printed the wrong models for, for my carriage and uh, Steve was in there and he was cringing because he's like, yeah, you're supposed to have holes for, um, I guess I printed the, what's the latest extruder on the Voron now? Uh, okay, there's a few, but uh, Clockwork 2 is like the stock one. Yeah, so that's the one I should be using, but I apparently printed the wrong parts, even though I printed oh. the Trident BOM. So I just... Oh, yeah, there's some issues in the GitHub because like it's the original Trident BOM. We haven't put Clockwork 2 into all of them yet. I don't think yet. Um, I think on the V2, Stealth Burner and Clockwork 2 are standard, but on Trident, okay. I still think it's Afterburner. And, and I printed anyways. Afterburner parts, not Stealth Burner. We got we got Chris Catlett and Duff in the chat letting us know. Thank you, guys, because I there we go. clearly incompetent, don't even know the difference. <laughs> um, and so I guess the difference is that there's there's a larger hole, and it's not a through hole, it's a blind hole. Uh, yep. I just sent it. I just, I just went ahead and shoved the... Uh, uh, the pieces in there. I will have the uh, the stealth burner pieces reprinted uh, for the stream. At least I hope I'll have them done. I, I don't honestly know what else <laughs> I have to print. Like I'm now a little worried of like what else did I miss kind of deal. But uh, you know it, it 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 can get a little confusing. But I said, ah, screw it. I'm just gonna toss it on there. And if it fails, well, honestly, that's just more content, right? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, um, Tarzman and some others like, maybe you should read ahead. Maybe I should, but I don't think the average nope. person is going to. And I think that's the nope. trick. The trick is that the average person isn't going to read ahead. And I want to I want to approach this as if I am a regular person, which I am. That is I'm my regular whole person. Thing on stream. <laughs> that is my whole thing on streams. I get yeah. I, I get comments from people that end a earn a uh, high user from channel pretty quickly. Most of the time. Um from people like why didn't you read ahead i'm like because the whole point of me doing the build is we're doing this together so yes sometimes i'll do prep work ahead of time but a lot of time if it's like hey i'm building this for the first time i've got the kit from the manufacturer yeah. here i've downloaded the instructions let's see what let's the experience is like and like if i went through everything and everything was a perfect build that would be a false equivalency because you know i not everyone does it. That's why I tell people if you're going to build a printer, what you do is you you, you get your parts, you you get your parts kit, you make sure you got the bomb, you got your, your all your your hardware, you print all your parts, and then what you do is you look at the manual and you sit there. And as you go through the manual, every time a printed part comes out, you take that printed part and you put it in another box. Yeah. And then anytime you see a printed part that has a heat set, you put the heat set in it. Or anytime you got to clear, like you got to debrim it or drill a hole out or whatever, go through the whole manual. One, this makes sure you have all the parts. Two, it saves you from the BS of having to stop every five minutes to put a heat set in. Um, but I do that on stream anyway. See, and and that's what I did because, yeah, okay, I could go through. I, I could read through. That manual is intimidating. The Voron manual is legitimately intimidating. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of used to either having lots of help on like a, a Prusa manual where it holds your hand the whole way or zero help where I've done like a, a we have a big D bot sitting over off camera um, that we built with the Thingiverse D bot instructions, which you should know are pretty bad. 
But it's Ooh. also it's also a lot easier to do your belt routing and that kind of stuff because the motors are on the front and they're visible. Um, and so there, there there are some differences. And so Voron, it's kind of in the middle, right? It's IKEA, but also hard mode in my experience. So the reason the manuals are very pictographic is language. Um, we have if you if you ever hop on the Voron Discord, check out the various. Uh, country channels yeah there's dozens of them um there is massive war on communities and countries that i i i don't even know exist um <laughs> so the reason the manuals are very pictographic mm -hmm. is so you can pretty much pick up that manual and not have to read it and still pretty much for the most part figure it out or just have to translate the odd little phrase here and there that's why everything has pictures that's why everything's fully illustrated it downside is that takes a ton of time so for those like phoenix when uh, Phoenix needs a full illustrated manual before we re release that shit. Cause right. that's what we do. Right. Um, that, that takes time. So luckily there's programs that you can use to like rip the cat and make those cool little images you see. Um, but it still takes time to go through that whole manual and figure out, okay, what is the right way to build this printer? Yep. And how do we put that to pictures? Um, so that's the reason you don't see a lot of words is because then, you know, imagine the work if we would have to translate that into 20 different languages, um, which people have done. Yeah, but luckily now software can do most of it anyways. So, yeah, it, it's kind of crazy when, you know, you, you look at what is possible out there, what people do, and then how it is modified. Right. And we look at product testing like, you know, let's let's talk about the Magneto for a little bit, because I, I think a lot of people want one. They want it see videos on it and you yep. and i both missed that train teaching tech beat us both to the punch and did you know when the when the embargo was to set so i i i i only knew, knew it was gonna go hours at... before <laughs> yeah same here and okay. the thing is i purposely okay i know teaching tech did a video on it i haven't yeah. really watched it I haven't I, anytime i'm working on something i try to avoid watching other people's same. critiques of it so I, I keep my opinion my own exactly um thank you now, teaching text video, from my understanding, was mostly just like a "Hey, look at this" kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I still like I have I have no plans to do a Magneto video until it's like shipping to customers. That's because what personally, I was thinking too. There's no point doing a my machine. My machine, like I'll be honest right now, my machine's broken. Um, I'm working on diagnosing an issue with one of the motors. Yeah, that, uh, nobody else appears to be having. Uh, you're I in haven't. The Discord, I haven't so had know. it. Um, it, it's it's literally too damp outside for me to print on it. I nothing will stick to the build plate right now because it is, oh. <laughs> it it because it, it, it's in my garage and my garage is not under air and it's it's been raining for twenty four hours. It is one hundred percent ambient humidity in Ooh. my garage, and Ooh. the build plate has condensation on it. And <laughs> if I heat it up, it is just going to turn into water. <laughs> Yeah, that's not good. I that's can wipe it down, but it's going to keep getting condensation. So I actually you need I, to get a dehumidifier, man. You well, need you need to vapor barrier garage and get a dehumidifier. There's no insulation in my attic above the garage either. So it is it's a losing battle, right? When it's yeah. raining. So I've learned this, and it was only because like I don't normally have machines out there or unless they're on camera yeah. for some reason. We've had issues with build plate adhesion on the XL that we cannot figure out, and. I had a mass, I've had massive issues with anything larger than like a Benchy worth of build plate adhesion on the Magneto X. It's got to be the moisture out there. There's, there's no other reason. These are both, you know, open air printers. I had no issues with enclosed yeah. printers because enclosed printers create their own environment and they don't yeah. have that problem. When you heat an enclosure, you are dehumidifying it by nature. Uh, so it was just one of those funny things that, all right, that makes sense. Now I have to bring the XL inside. So, so I, I've not been having that issue with uh, bed adhesion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that, that is, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. So um, I'll be honest. The first thing I do with any printer is uh, take the flex plate off and put either a uh, vision miner mm -hmm. um, because somebody sent me some recently and that stuff's awesome. I got Or some other stuff. bed adhesion helper. I, 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 I view a, I view a printer bed like a skillet. You have to season it. Sure. it, it like, yeah, so PEI, pure clean PEI, cleaned with soapy water and dried right and whatnot is pretty good. But you know what's better? PEI with some shit on it. And I really care about the printer printing. I really don't judge a printer by bed adhesion because it's fair. PEI. Yeah. No, no company makes their Magneto 
Pio Poly isn't, you know, there isn't a guy in the garage at Pio Poly making the P the PEI. The sheets of Altem. They all, he's just like, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just sprinkling some some Altem powder on it. Yeah, he sees salt baying. Yeah, yes, that's how the so texture it, beds it, they, are made. They, they source bang. these beds from a supplier, <laughs> right? And there's only a few companies that do it. Yeah. Um. So it's just a it's a thing. It's an off the shelf item. It has nothing to do with Pio Poly. It has nothing to do with bamboo. It has nothing no. to do with Prusa. Although, okay, Prusa they actually do kind of get involved with their beds. Yeah, they, but um, Prusa is much more yeah uh, vertically integrated than most companies. Yes. So for a lot of it, it's just it's just an off the shelf item that they just you know it's a, it's a PI bed. We contact the people that make PI beds. Hey, here's the specs we need. Yep. They make them and we slap them on our printer. So you having bad bed adhesion is like. I don't, I don't know. Just put some glue stick on it. I don't. It's, yeah, it's, it's I mean, season it. Right season now, it. the glue stick would be turning purple again. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I put um Northprint 3D gave me some stuff to try out. I've got the the armchair engineering stuff. That's a white powder that they sell. They give you. That's really weird to bring through airport customs. I was gonna say um, if you had ISO, I've used that. Um, I've got some Vision Miner. I've even got some stuff. Um, uh, what you call it? Gave me Pantheon gave me the stuff they use on their their machine the nice. hs3 there and um although that stuff is more for like nylons and petg is not quite um abs's the vision miner stuff is great though i love the vision miner stuff with abs um it i gotta get some. it yeah it's really good um Does so i, I well season my materials bed. too it i use it for abs and it works really good P, P, uh, pla as well that's that's what I have on the the Magneto X and it's working great. Okay. But back to my machine. Um, my machine is currently down right now. Yeah. Uh, because we're working on diagnosing an issue. And here's the thing. It's a first revision product. Yep. Like I I'm always hesitant. I I'm all for it. You know I I've spot I've spoken to Mark from Pio Poly. Um, he's such I've a great seen guy. the machine. Oh yeah, they're they're a great team. Dude, um, we, they have been one of the most Mark... responsive teams I've ever oh, worked with. They are amazing to work with, especially and, like, when you I, consider. I've got a, how I want the time difference is they're crazy. I'm responsive. having an issue with my machine. So it's like, Hey guys, so I'm having this issue with my machine. He's like, okay, cool. Uh, when I get into the, the lab tomorrow, I'll, I'll, I'll write up something. I just got a PDF sent to me. It's like eight pages long with detailed instructions on how to check everything just to get my specific machine back online. Freaking I'm sweet. like, kudos, kudos, kudos. That's the kind of testing I want because I understand that this is not, you know, their, their machine isn't something that's just, you know, they didn't just go grab some NEMA 17s, some GT2 belt and a generic hot end and slap it together and call it a they printer. They did not which, do that. Any company can do that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm honestly really surprised nobody has managed to beat Bamboo at Bamboo's game yet because let's be honest, the Bamboo doesn't do anything special. It just does what it does really well. It's got a lot, a, a lot of money at it. It's got a they lot of all... processors. Well, on the X1. Yeah, it's fair. Because that one's running uh, a rock chip with Linux. Um, all the other ones are just ESP 32s. Um, Even the P1. Yeah, P P1 is ESP 32. Oh, as far as I know, that's what that's what's the brain is. That's what the that the A board or whatever the board is called that actually has the brain is. Um, so, um, oh shoot, what was I saying? Talking about why nobody's beat Bamboo at, at their oh. game. So any anyone else can build like let's be honest what is the bamboo uh, it, it's an enclosed core xy machine Voron's been doing that shit for half a decade over, right and, right and they they're feature compatible yep. like a machine a, an enclosed core xy with clipper does pretty much everything a bamboo does yeah you can get obico if you want the uh the 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 ai spaghetti detection um you could put a uh, an ERCFA on it or whatever. I think you can even put an AMS on it now because there's an open AMS project going on. Yep. Um, like there, there's nothing that the machine physically does that no other machine can't do as well. Right. But they threw a lot of money at it right at they the beginning. Did. They have a really clean package. They have a really closed ecosystem, but it's an ecosystem meant for I just want make plastic boat people, and it works really good for them. Yep. The problem is they've gotten into the Apple mindset. They, they've even said they want to be the Apple of 3D printing. Well, guess what? That means it's the holiday season. We need to have a printer for the holiday season. Um, and they, I don't know how much testing the A1 has. I've seen, it's funny. You see people, comments from people like, oh, they've had this in the bag for six months. So they just waited to release it around the holidays. I'm like, I really don't think so. How long development time takes for this stuff? Like, I remember when the eight, when the P1 or the X1 was announced and they had the Kickstarter and they showed pictures of like racks of these machines printing and testing. Has anyone ever seen an equivalent of that for the A1s? 
I haven't. I haven't. It just came out. Like they use the standard off the shelf power cable for the bed. People have cut it open. It's it's, it's just a off the shelf power cable. And also it it bends. Like that's something like and then also it's the same the whole, cable oh, that's on the A1 are, mini from what I can tell. But it's installed differently. Right? Well, and it's a much much higher wattage heater. It's a much higher. Yeah, cuz originally they told everyone it's only good for 80 degrees. And then everyone's like, well, this is useless. I can't print ABS, which ABS is making a comeback. Go for on. Um, ASA, though. It's ASA. ASA. Come on. It's, it's the same plastic. I, uh, no, well, uh, I actually. Hit, I don't have a zoom button on this. Mr. Um, Mr. Previous tool and die guy should know that they're not the same technical plastics. Functionally, they're the same. And, and that's also, why you should use the crazy uncle of ASA because it's UV stable. Here's the thing. Have you ever had an ABS print fail in UV? I've never had one. Uh, well, I mean, eventually. That's why car dashboards Eventually crack. in 20 years. Like, hey, yeah, if you're, hey. if, if, you're re, if you're reprinting the bumper for your 2002 <laughs> uh, Chrysler Sebring, yeah. I know, drive a 2002 might... Honda Accord, sir. <laughs> I mean, Seriously, it's my daily driver. <laughs> that's like, and the funny thing is in automotive, I don't think I've ever made a mold that was designed for ASA. It's just ABS. Yeah, it's all ABS. Cause, PC. Cause it's, it's all ABS. Well, and that's because nowadays. ASA has not been around anywhere near as long as ABS. No. So ABS is stupid cheap. Like when you look at it on a, uh, when we used to make our own filament, it is yep. not only stupid cheap, it is very, very close to water in terms of its thickness. It's 1.07 grams per cubic centimeter. Where water's one, okay? So yep. you're you're very, very close to just pushing water through a barrel, which means you can make ABS so much faster than you can make something like a, especially PETG, but a PLA. PLA is 1.24, 1.25. PETG is closer to 1.27. And That's why the speed bench you folks use ABS. Yeah, that's they exactly MG, why they do. MG94. Yeah. Love that resin. Yeah, and um, that's why, because it is so much easier and faster to flow. People are like, well, look at my speed benchy. <sighs> Which is also why <laughs> flow charts are bullshit. They are. I hate when people judge hot ends on flow rate because it's such bullshit. Because here's the thing. Anyone could take a chunk of metal, uh, write a white paper about how they turned it up to 350 degrees Celsius and just melt ABS through it like water. Anyone can do that. Yep. So you can go, oh, look how good our flow rates are. It's like, yeah, because you're literally just turning it into a super soaker because you're melting the plastic and turning it into water. Better hope you, you don't it doesn't carburize in there at those temps. Um, it will. But <laughs> that's the thing with flow rates. So like, yeah. And the thing is, the, the funny thing is too. open up your slicer, crank your speeds, like whatever printer you got, crank your speeds and then slice the thing and then look at your flow rate. There's a little usually on most slicers, you can see what the yeah, actual flow cap. rate numbers are. Pretty much anyone running, like, I, I see people put volcanoes or super mosquitoes in, like, enders. And the ender and I'm like, cannot move Christ, fast you are enough. not pushing that much plastic. Even yep. on my borons, yep. at my normal boron speeds, I only hit flow rate capacity on infill. And that's double extruding infill at literally the limit of the hot end. Um, because, fun trick, if you got to print, when you tell it inf infill percentage, it's a volume thing not a line thing. Mm -hmm. So if you tell your hot end with a 0.4 nozzle to extrude your um, infill at 0.6 or 0.7, um, it will make less, it'll, it'll still have the same amount of material. It's just less lines. Yeah. But less lines and it'll speed your print up. Yep. So that's a, that's a trick. If you got to print a lot of stuff with high infill, increase your width, you'll do less travel moves. Yep. It saves quite a bit of time. And you, and your parts come out as strong because you still have the same amount of material in there. It's just, you know, Instead of a, a one millimeter or a 0.4 line every 10 millimeters, you have like a 0.6 millimeter line every 12 millimeters or something like that. Yep. It, it, it works out pretty equivalent, especially at higher percentages of infill. And let's be real. Like the 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 biggest hot end on the Magneto is fast. It can flow. I don't know if the official, I don't know if the number is actually official. I don't know if we could talk about that specific number yet, but let's say it's north of 60. Okay. It's north of 60 cubic millimeters per second. I, outside of the Magneto, I'm not entirely certain many machines can move that fast without, like, the 24-7 guys type of work, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. My VZBot, um, I have a Goliath on the VZBot. Let me, let me pull it up here. So, Orca Slicer. Let me pull up Orca Slicer here. 
Um, let me load up my VZBot profile and I'll just show you what the VZBot's doing. This has a Goliath hot end on it. Um, which... what, what is that? For, 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 for me and the folks that have no idea what the hell that is, what is that? Um, it used to be called the Long Schlong Dong, I believe. <laughs> Um, and they renamed it to Goliath to be more PC. Um, no, I, now I got to get one of those just to call it by its government name. Yeah. So <laughs> wait, so, I don't want to dead name a hot end. <laughs> um, oops. Uh, let's get this whatever. Um, so th this is the Goliath hot end. So it's, it's, um, yeah, uh, I can see VG why they called it what they called it. <laughs> so it'll, it's a hundred watt, 24 volt heater. Holy crap. Um, it, it can print up to 550, but it, it can only really, like, I, I wouldn't push it above 300. Because, by the way, for those wondering, um, when it, when you see hot ends rated for 300C, it's the sock. The sock can't get above 300C. Or so it's that's the why thermistor. You see... The regular NTC thermistors can't do it. You'd well, have they, to go they the can. They just drift. Most, right. most thermistors are only accurate within a temperature range. Right. And if you get too high above and below it, um, it's inaccurate. So, for example, a Beta 3950. Um, I, I plugged one into the ANET yesterday and I put it under my, under my tongue and it said it was 45 degrees Celsius. Obviously, I'm not 45 degrees Celsius. I'd be dead. Um, so it's it's accurate within well, like a certain I mean, range, but as you get above and below it, it drifts. I'll say so it. I is, think you're hot. <laughs> um, so the thing is, you can work with that if you know what the drift is. It's just you can't use it as an act of comparison. So you can't compare like 400 degrees on one machine and 400 on the other. Because right. the one machine might be 420. The other one might be 390. But if you take the time to tune your profile for the temperatures it tells you, you can actually get around it. Um, but anyway, so the uh, Goliath here, what's the flow rate of it? I don't even know what it is. Um, it's 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 a lot. <laughs> the it's flow rate is just the, yes. Yeah, flow rate is yes. I don't know uh, additional information. Yeah, it doesn't actually tell you what the flow rate is. Someone in chat knows what the flow rate is. But TLDR, um, what are you doing here? the slicer so here's the vz bot this is the stock profile for it the only thing i've done with it is um i dropped my travels from 800 millimeters a second down to 500 um because i was getting layer shifts at 800 millimeters a second 10k or 20,000 excel yeah um so i dropped it down to a conservative 500 um conservative yeah conservative yeah. 500 so, so let me just uh load up something here and jacob lord is right grant just getting ignored after giving a compliment actual comedy i'm just saying i, I, I smiled i uh -huh. smiled yeah okay um <laughs> i don't know let me let me uh handle latch i need to find something to print here there we go, there we go. print a random part for the uh for the the milo so here is so you can go to line type and look at your flow. This is the flow rate mm -hmm. of this machine. So down here in infill, we are hitting twenty millimeters a second. Of, Goliath of will do a hundred cubic cube. millimeters a second. It says. Uh -huh. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Sixty. So around... Sixty with uh, 0. 0.5 on PLA with one point oh on ABS can easily do a hundred plus. Okay. God so bless. Look, God. look at the. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these speeds and feet. So this is a, again, this is a 0.4 nozzle. Right. So this is a 0.4 nozzle. Right. Doing infill at 250 millimeters a second, 10K XL, and we're hitting around 20 millimeters cubed a second flow rate. Which is, that's, that's a fast print for most people. That's a Rapido. Yeah. That's a standard, that's a, a Revo high flow. Easily. No, oh, yeah. Like. And honestly, so, that's a V6 or even a Revo with your temps cranked a little bit to help out. And a CHT to help. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I mean. Like, I think people really overestimate the flow rates they need. Because, again, this is a this is a Goliath. It becomes on more of a, a measuring VZ contest than anything yeah. else. Yeah. So it, it, it's, I think people really overestimate the hot end. So like on the Magneto X, there's three hot end sizes. There's like a, a small, medium, cool, large, by the way, I have, I've just been leaving the medium in because Same. I haven't really run into any issues with it where I needed to go faster. I think that one's speed. rated. Yeah. I, I've pushed it to 30 and it hasn't complained. Yeah. Um, I, I'm printing mostly with the stock speeds. All I've done is just play around with temperatures for like ABS and whatnot. I'm running and a it, VFA it, test when the rain stops. I, I'm, I'm very curious all the way up to 50. Just to see what happens. 50 cubic millimeters a second, 500 millimeters per second print speed. Because, like, that that machine... And see, this is the trick. For those that do want to print really fast, 
you eventually have to go to a machine like the Magneto X. You, you, you will run out of stepper motor. You will have to go to something that is full, uh, fully closed loop. You have to. not really. You can you can uh, with nowadays with the fifty one sixties and high volt drivers, you you can get reliable high speed out of standard stepper motors. Really, the issue is you are if this was your safe margin, it's here, but now it's here, but it's mm-hmm. not as wide as it used. It's to a be. real thin. So, yeah. So I I tune my machines more for um, reliability. Um, if, if I find like five hundred millimeters a second, I start getting layer shifts. I drop a hundred off right Easy. off the top, and if, and if it's good at four hundred. I'll drop it down to 375 and call it a day because like, I like having that safety margin there because it's what's needed. Exactly. Well, two things. One say most prints are either a day print or it's less than a day or a day. That's how I view prints. Yep. So if I throw something on the printer, it's either going to be, I'm either pulling it off before I go to bed or it's going to be done tomorrow at some point. I don't care in between. So if I can print something in 18 hours, 100% reliably, if I speed it up and it can now print in 16 hours, but there's a 5% chance that it fails, that's not worth it in my opinion. Taking reliable um, every time. Because it, it, it you, also, if the print finishes at, you know, 6 a.m. or it finishes at 4 a.m., I don't get up till 8 a.m. It, yep, it doesn't matter there either. It, it is it is the same end time as far as you know functionality is concerned. I'm the same way, and it's it's why we literally we try to have prints be 18 hours or less because I'm I'm normally awake 18 hours a day, uh, or um you know they're 24 plus hours, uh, and then we try to do like you know maybe 20. If you can't do 18 or less, it's 22 to 23. If you can't do 22 or 23 at that point, it could be 36 and it, 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 it's the same to me because it's going to take two days to get the print done. Yeah, um, that was the thing with uh, the reason I like uh, we did a bunch of testing with that with uh, printed Ford. Uh, Doc spent a bunch of time doing optimization on plate size and how many models per plate and plate time. And basically it worked out. Yeah, about an 18 to 22 hour plate is key because you pretty much you wake up in the morning. Yep. You clean the plate off. You start the next print. That's all you do. It's yep. a 24 hour thing. So yeah, you can shave. He was able to shave a couple hours off of the, the like the speeds and feeds and, and shorten nothing. the print time by a couple hours. Yeah. The problem is all of a sudden you start getting a little, uh, the odd weird artifact in a print. You have the R odd part because you printed that first layer a little bit faster. That one part. Yeah. It kind of warped off the bed. So guess what? You got to reprint that now. Um, like there, it, it, it adds, there's a very there's an e- it's very easy to get a good safe margin and then once you start going outside of that it's not that like the machine's unreliable it's just the odds of something happening increase and exponentially if you, increase not just a it, little it, bit it, a lot of it oh yeah it, it, if it's just you printing you know a random print yeah. and it's like cool i can print this in six hours instead of eight hours what do you do but it's like no i need to have this machine printing a full plate of parts every day reliably it, yeah like you're not going to be able to cut it down to under 18 hours no. because if you cut it under 18 hours, then okay, then you go to bed with a, a print started and then the next print finishes midday and it's like weird. And then the next print finishes at two in the morning, which is pointless. Yeah. Like it, 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 it does, it, you no it, good. If it finished yeah, at 6 a.m., it would be the, the exact same problem. Unless, unless you're the type of person that is going to get up in the middle of the night and switch it over. But anyone that, which has, I know people that do that. I know I, people that do that. I have done it before where we've had deadlines where it's like, all right, if we're not waking up in the middle of the night, we're not meeting this deadline and the client is going to absolutely pay for it. Right. I will wake up. I will, you know, go switch parts over, but there is such a high potential of failure when you are operating drowsy. It's the same way when you're, you know, oh. driving, when you're tired, you have a much higher probability of getting into an accident because you're tired. You have a much higher probability of breaking something on your printer, accidentally touching the bill plate, forgetting to clean it. And then your parts aren't going to stick and you're going to end up missing your deadline. This is why I like nozzle probes. The amount of times I've started a print without a print bed on and it just starts printing on the magnet. And you're like, oh, wait, stop, stop. Because <laughs> it's a nozzle probe. It'll it'll home on your hand if it's in there. Yep. Um, so. And it, like, so we've also done software testing. So we, Nero and I were both part uh, and are still part of the X1 Plus uh, development, although they have. They've slowed down quite a bit. I think they're, they've actually pretty much stopped and they're awaiting firmware R release from Bamboo. Yeah. Um, you know, we were both a part of that. I, I believe oh, yeah. I was the first 
outside yeah, you got in, and then they lame. invited me in. Um, yeah, because I we invited you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like so, you guys so, want hero when you're all bringing in. <laughs> I've got I, I can't remember which version <laughs> I have um, yeah. installed, but yeah, they've slowed down a lot because Bamboo is getting involved and they're working together. So now you're not on the couple of guys. Yeah, let's just get it going. It's like okay, now we got corporate involved, and now we got to wait for the official firmware so we can make ours compatible with the official firmware. And yada, yada, yada. And it slows everything down. Yeah, I know I still get comments on my video. It's like, where is it? It's like, well, things have kind of changed. Soon it's TM, now, right? We we don't know eventually. either. <laughs> yeah. So it, that that kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, But that was an interesting one because, you know, you, your your machines were online still, right? Or no, were you no, running your gap too? Um, I, I run them. Um, I, I connect them to the net to update Do them. The and then I disconnect okay. them. So, so I, mine have been up to date. Um. I just take them offline once they're updated because so I do think I'm yeah. the only one in that group that's running air gapped. Um, so that that's been an interesting challenge too. Yeah. Mine's on my home network, but yeah. that's because nope. my, my workflow, I pretty much have to be able to access my machines remotely internally. Cause like I'm sitting here at my computer, right? So I got, I got my main screen, I got my YouTube screen. And then above it, I actually have a separate monitor. Um, that has Discord, and then it's a wide screen. It's it's just it's a really cheap ultra wide. It's like one of those at 1080p ultra wides. Um, that's like 25, 60 Got like by main 1080p. sale and stuff and all that up there. Uh, no, it's an LG, but I paid like a hundred bucks for it. It's okay. it like one of the really cheap ones. Um, but I keep a tab open with like all my printers, yeah. which really sucks with Bamboo because you can't monitor multiple Bamboo printers easily. You have to open a slicer. It's so stupid. I hate it. Like I wish there was a web interface. That you can just open up your phone, but no, it's you got to use their slicer, and the slicer is stupid for having like you can't have multiple windows open. You have to have multiple slicers open. Oh, set up within, for each yeah, 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 yeah. You have to do. You that. You can't just tab through different monitors. It's stupid. I hate it. Yeah, I, I've I've actually been enjoying main sale. So we we got we got the Magneto X. I had about a week where we couldn't get it to turn on. Well, we could get it to turn on. We couldn't get the screen to work. Lo and behold, we had a one of the locking connectors had come loose and it was yep. underneath something. Uh, I, I don't know how final that under the hood design is, but let's just say it was under something and nobody could see it. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That one looks loose. Lo and behold. Yeah. The entire 24 yep. volt power supply was not feeding power, which means the the controller like the controller board was not getting power which means the whole yep. thing just wasn't working yeah and uh that that took a week for us to figure out and it's like we don't know if that was an assembly thing or somehow got jostled during shipping um but like that's that's kind of the weird stuff when you're doing beta testing and product testing because yeah it can very quickly turn from oh we can't get the machine run. Oh, it was that dumb of a thing. Okay, we can change the connector. We can add a thing during our production to make sure that all these connectors are there. Um, you know, and for you, you're you're dealing with a particular problem that yep. since nobody else is dealing with it, this is the fun problem with product testing. Oh, I know. And the best is part it is actually it's like, a problem. Yes, that's the thing, because this has linear motors. How many yep. printers have linear motors? One, it's in my garage. So trying to diagnose an issue with a linear motor is like, okay, is it a wiring issue? Is it a software issue? Mm -hmm. Is it a, the company that made the linear motors messed up something internally? Like, that's the thing you you have to like, so like we, I've been, oh man, like you, you're, you're on the discord. You saw all the yep. troubleshooting I've gone through. Yep. We've tried, uh, potentially it's a static issue. My garage is very dry in the winter. Um, and it wasn't doing this before I enclosed it. So now that I got the top hat on it, is it okay? So now I've gone ahead and grounded my machine. Is it a config issue? So we've gone and we've changed some config stuff, commented stuff, added stuff, removed stuff. Nope. It's not doing that. Is it a slicer issue? Maybe the slicers issuing some corrupted G code causing it. Nope. Is it a version of Clipper issue? Is it a version of the operating system? Cause it Clipper runs on a, a Linux distro. Is it USB cable issue? Is it USB port issue? Um, you, you have to sit there and that's why one of the reasons I, I recommend people build a boron stock. That's where I'm doing. as many variables as possible. I'm doing the inverted yeah. electronics. Everything else is yeah. stock. The inverted electronics should yeah. be stock. That, that one's fine. It's yeah. that should be stock. Let's let's be yeah. honest. 
It should be. <laughs> yeah, especially on the Trident. Yeah. The Trident, you just open up the gap. It's a little bit harder on the V2 because you have the bed mounted there. Mm -hmm. And every time you lift it up and put it down, it's like you'd have to, although with tap, it's not a big deal, but you may have to like re-zero it. Yeah. Um, it's like a scope mount, right? Every time you take it off, put it back on, you might, it might re-zero, it might not. It might not. Um, you might be, you know. Because you're building it yourself. You don't know, right? That's the problem. It's not a precision thing. It's, it's. Some that's the biggest variable here box. is, is, yep. is the 200 ish pound gorilla that's putting it together. Right. Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> and no matter how good of a kit, no matter how good of a printer that you make, the human factor yep. is, is, and that's literally why product testing is so freaking important. If you don't put it in the hands of actual users, unfortunately, by and large, your engineers are not the same people that are buying nope. your products. They're not. Nope. And and you have to assume the worst. Like uh, the bamboo, I, so many comments. Like, so I do check in on like the bamboo subreddit and discord every now and then. Why? Hi, it's not LIDAR for those that know. Um, it kind of technically is. Yeah. Light really. imaging. LIDAR, <laughs> it uses a camera and a laser. LIDAR is beep, boop, beep, boop. I, and it's, I have real using, LIDAR. It's not doing ranging. I have it's real not doing LIDAR. ranging. Yeah, you have real lighter. It's not it's doing sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> it's not doing ranging. It's just looking at a squiggly line and going, "Oh shit, it's squiggly." Let me adjust some numbers. Um, kind of. Yeah. There, there's more to it that, of course, we can't. We don't exactly know how it works. It's yeah. It's lidar. Let's go with lidar light. <laughs> you do know there's an entire open source equivalent of it that's available for Vorons. Is there really and Clipper? Yeah, there's an open source Clipper compatible version of it. I kind it's of been around for a while. Like, so a buddy at uh, at uh, Murph last year. I don't one. know. I don't. I don't. I don't go to Murph. Literally, it's just a camera and a laser line. That's all it is. The camera yeah. just looks at the laser line and goes, "Okay, I'm expecting it to not be squiggly. It's squiggly. Adjust flow rate so it's not squiggly." Oh, hey, no longer squiggly. That's all it does. That's all it does. It just it does comparison. It just comp machine learning comparison. If it works, images. it works though. You know. Yep. And, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just it's not lidar. And, yeah. But they it's marketing right marketing so anyways um engineers so are not it, your end it, users yeah engineers are not your end users like so the amount of comments i saw from people like well you shouldn't have tipped the machine over it tells you not to tip the machine over i'm like i'm sorry everybody's it, going like, to do that everyone's going to tip it over at some point either building it they're like oh shipping thing i'm if you design something that like if your user accidentally tips it over during assembly or fixing it or you're like, oh, it happened during shipping, or it's just shipping, then it's not designed well. But let's like you need to assume the worst. With let's your look here though on the shipping excuse. I don't, I don't accept that excuse. Oh, I don't, I don't. Look either. at the I don't shipping. They have one of the enough. best packagings that I've ever seen for a fully assembled printer. Like it's because it they is, want you to keep the box. It's you have so to keep the box. yeah, you have to keep the box. But it is so well packed. The X1 carbon. I yeah. refuse to accept that that they didn't you know test that kind of thing and you know i i laugh because when we were at prusa and we'll 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 show you guys that um at some point i haven't point, gone to visit prusa yet i need to do that they have a very like you know they, they call it their super technical way of testing crush forces on boxes they have an i-beam with a mark on it at one meter they turn the box on its angle and they drop it right it is it is incredibly jank but it is exactly what would happen right yeah like it's exactly what would happen and that's how they test it and you can do that a couple hundred times and see if your packaging is equivalent it doesn't even you don't even need to do it on 500 boxes you can do it on 10 yep. at 10 times a piece and if it breaks we have a problem and like that's not that's the easy part of product testing it's the how is somebody going to assemble it? I don't care what your manual says. I don't care what you tell people to do. What will the average person yep. actually do in a real world environment? Because that is what product testing is. Just because you as the manufacturer have decided that a product should be utilized one way, in one way only, does not mean that your end user is going to follow those directions. In fact, it generally means they're actively going to break the way you yep. want. <laughs> Uh, when, when I got the Magneto X, the very first thing was open it up, yep. take all the pictures. We want to see how the sh how it survived shipping. Yep. And there's a reason it's it's going to be shipped on pallets now. Yep. Um, My you, box was in great shape. Your box was in great shape. Um, no pallet for me. No pallet for you. Was Your your bed wasn't attached, right? Correct. You had to attach your Yeah, I had okay. to attach it. So for mine, it shipped with the bed attached. 
There is a reason it doesn't ship with the bed attached. They're very heavy. Um, they're very heavy, and the original bracket design needed some beefing. So and like, that was I, one of the first things we came across, which you don't know that no. until you put your printer in a box and ship it halfway across the planet. But what I found um, out- And then have it sit at customs for three weeks. Yeah, I'm um, so sorry about that. You and I got our printers the same day, and mine was shipped yeah, three and weeks I have a after pre, I have a pre-production beta unit, and you got the- like final revision test unit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how final revision mine is, but like we, we found that's, that that's why we're testing. Them. That's yeah, why we're testing. Them. We still found that the packaging for the bed was not technically adequate because yep. it rubbed through in an area and scratched up the bottom. Now it was, a, it was not a big scratch. It wasn't enough to where like as a beta tester that I'm upset, but if I had paid $2,000 for the product yep. and it had a scratch on it, I'm going to go ahead and make a, a make a support call. I'm like, hey, is there a paint color? Can you send me a new panel? And yeah, those panels are easy to t replace. They're too. easy to replace, but yeah. it's never it's never like, is it simple to do? It's yeah. what is the cost of making that fix occur? It, it's what a you lot of companies flip it over. You can, <laughs> but it, it, it uh, on that I know panel, I know that specific panel, I can't because that's the one where the wires come out. Oh, okay. So I don't. Oh no, yeah, because it does have the cutout. That's yeah, right. it has a cutout only on one side. Um, you know, and and the cost of PO Poly having to ship out a brand new piece to me is so high. I really want to know how much Bamboo Lab is eating on this A1 recall. I I want to because it's because Micro Center. Micro Center took a bunch of refunds. Yep. So Micro Center is going to want, because for those that don't know how it works, is usually when a company buys the printer, Micro Center goes, hey, Bamboo, we want to buy 10,000 printers. They give them the money. Bamboo sells them. So Bamboo is out of the picture now once because Micro Center has the money. So when Micro Center sells the printer, it's not like they give a portion to Bamboo. They've already paid for the printers. Yep. Um, so the thing is, though, now that there's a recall, Micro Center gave all that money back to the customers. So then Micro Center is going, hey, oh, shit, we have all these recalled printers bamboo well and, and now now that it's officially a recall which yeah. i have a feeling micro center was likely a, a a pretty strong uh influence on that because it has to hit that legal limit of yeah. a uh of a recall for which everyone is, for everybody's that. insurances to start getting involved oh, yeah. this is where insurance gets involved yeah and, and the whole thing where it's like oh we'll give you like an 80 dollar credit if you do the repair yourself and wait is like i don't know the legality of that it's that is in the states it is very gray but it from from my yeah, understanding states, what about europe for my they have uh, all the consumer protection laws over there that is really because you can't even work well on they have uh, that provision in their yep. official recall they say yeah, they, that some don't, areas don't might it. not be well no they're just not going to offer it in some areas you will only have okay. the 80 dollar i while i like I very much disagree with their decision to give you an extra $40 if you do the work yourself. Yeah. I think the end user looks at it and says, well, that's a free spool of filament for me. I can do the work myself. And I worry that we've got a liability issue at that point. I'm not a lawyer, so it's not my position. Yeah. But I would certainly say that if you're doing the work yourself and you are not a certified electrician, um, regardless of if you can do it, I don't care if you can do it. If you don't possess the licensure and the insurance to do it, you are putting the lives of not only yourself, but innocent bystanders, including pets and anyone that is your neighbor that is within fire shot of your home uh, at risk. And I don't personally feel comfortable with that. Yeah, it, that that's the thing. Like here, it, I know we, we both get sh like crapped on for commenting on bamboo a lot you think but i think it, yeah <laughs> uh, but here's the thing the reason i do it is because i i personally hold bamboo to a higher standard than pretty much any other company other than like prusa in this business because that's what they have done to themselves yep they have come into this market saying we're going to be the apple of 3d printing we are going to sell machines that just work that don't require user service we are going to so i'm like cool so you've set your pedestal this high and you're now going to be judged on that high pedestal. That's correct. So like, I, I still recommend, I recommended a machine, to the, an X1 to somebody on stream yesterday. Like, I still recommend their machines. The P1S is amazing bang for the it, buck. One top um, printer in my book for 23. Yeah, it's an amazing machine, but 
they have set the bar this high for 3D printing companies. So now you're going to be critiqued on that level. And for reference, yes, I still call out Prusa on some shit. Like the fact that the X, uh, the XL is a 2000 plus machine. It doesn't even have a fucking webcam. Sorry for the language, but that's pathetic in today's day and age. Um, like it also Prusa only has single sided part cooling. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. it, it's got it, it's enveloped some of it. No, it doesn't. I don't know. I've had no print issues with my Mark. No, IV. It, I like the next scooter. I want to throw one in a Vora. The Mark so. IV like does. The... the XL doesn't. The XL is only oh. one side. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's a mod for it. There's not a good one yet, and we're working on it because it, so, someone's going to yeah. throw a current air system in there anyways at some point. I hate current. By the way, okay. Dude, the Remember? Magneto doesn't need it, and I'm so happy that it doesn't. I know. Need I love it. it. I love it. If love you it. if it, you it, are it, looking to buy a Magneto right now. Both, I, I will comfortably tell you, don't buy the current those, air upgrade. Those, you the fans on that tool head are blowing Matrons. Dude. They are loud, but holy shit, do they work. Dude, <laughs> I tried PLA at 215 at 100% fan. It blew the layer off that it was printing. It was cooling it faster than it could fuse to the layer below yep. it. And, and the best part is, oh when gosh. you load up ABS and you set that fan to like 20%, that machine is squ- it's so it is the quietest until until you turn those it's weird because up. you don't hear the belt noise like you yeah. see like the whoosh whoosh yeah whoosh. it sounds like a train like you still get the movement noise but it's a different noise you hear the yeah. rails move it's, it's like, kind of nice like if you've ever built a voron before you belt it up and you put the bearings you can in, hear and the you balls the rolling in the races it, around. <laughs> it just sounds like that yeah it's 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 a weird um and then also mine's enclosed so it's even quieter. Yeah, mine's see, not I get enclosed. some weird, I get some panel resonance, but that happens to every printer at high speed when you enclose it. So that's not something I'm going to critique it on. Um, so you do get some panel resonance, but the actual machine is overall quieter. It is. Um, yeah. I got, I got to see if I can get a, uh, get an enclosure because that this it, is, it's worth it. Oh, it, I, it, it, I'm sure it's it is. a little awkward. Um, like my, my biggest critique on the enclosure right now is it's a top hat. So you have to like put it on and mm-hmm. pull it up. And then also the filament comes through the enclosure. So you, you, if you have filament loaded, you can't just take the top hat off because it connects through the side. Because I, I had to set up a reverse Bowden, so I have a yeah. Uh, they should have had it on each end. Um, that's an easy thing. They just ship a reverse Bowden right. with the commercial thing. Like I just happen to have enough Bowden tube on hand to make a reverse Bowden. But that's I mean, really, you if you're beta testing. testing and don't have enough Bowden tube yeah. on hand, like yeah. you know, it's like okay, I've got spare hot ends. I've got well, not the hot ends on that machine, but I've got normally, I've got spare hot ends. I've got yeah. Bowden tubes. I've got nozzles. I've got everything that we that you would need to be able to repair a printer yourself, so you can get back to testing as quickly as possible. Yep. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I'm really impressed with that. Um, like I, I really want to be printing on mine, put it that way. Like it, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's going to be, I think it's going to make it into the, the, my, my, my current farm of printers that I use regularly. Although I will say it is living on the floor. It is heavy as shit. Yeah. I can't move mine. I, it, mine lives on the floor. Um, it's got a little, it's got a little corner to itself. Um, and it lives on the floor. It also had its own little <laughs> towel. I saw for a little bit. That was cute. It had its own little towel to hide it. Who Although was the first nice person that, I... that correctly guessed it was a Magneto? Oh, a bunch of people did. Yeah. A bunch of... I yeah. mean, it, it doesn't help but that I, I keep a drop down in my uh on my on my browser. Yeah, like it, it shows all my it... printers. Yeah. And then you just see Magneto X, or I fired up Orca Slicer and there's a profile for Magneto X there. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm totally uh, I just loaded up the, the nightly <laughs> release of Orca Slicer because I wanted to see what the speeds and feeds were. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I was hanging out with our Discord when my chip said, oh, I've got a new printer show up. They said, what is it? I said, I, I can't tell you. I'm sorry. And they're like, it's a Magneto <laughs> X. I said, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> like, they instantly know. Um, I'm like, how? And I went back when we could finally talk about it. Like, how did you know? They said, we didn't. We just guessed because it's the only printer that you would, that you would like, actively apply to be yep. a beta tester for. Because I look at that machine and say, if it can deliver on every single promise that it's made and kind of correct some of the little bugs and things that we're seeing. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely a first revision product. Like I could, it, it, my personal opinion right now, if, if if you have two grand to drop on a printer and you're okay with playing with something that might need a little bit of wrenching, um, it is probably a very good option. It's 300 by 400 by 300 volume. It's a great it build wicked size. quick. It's a solid machine. Like it the is. actual construction of the machine is like, yes, it's it's aluminum extrusion, but it's not like twenty. It's built it's like actually, a brick shit house. Okay, I'll say oh, yeah. it. <laughs> it. It's a tank. It's yeah. a freaking tank. Um, that tool head is a beast. Yes, it's heavy, 
but those linear motors just drive it. It, it has no problem. Like it, it just moves. Um, you're never going to have to worry about a belt breaking on you. You're never going to have to nope. worry about a bearing exploding on you. Although technically it does run on rails. Yeah. So you're going to have to do any maintenance that rails require, but you're not going to have to worry about a belt or bearing exploding. Um, it's actually pretty serviceable. Like you just take that shroud off and the whole tool head's there to fiddle with. I, I, I really don't um, even want under the hood. You undo a front screws and all the electronics are right there. Is it bad? So that it's actually I don't want to run that shroud. I think it's way prettier without the shroud. I took mine off because I'm doing troubleshooting and I might not put it back on. I like the look of it. Just dude, there's there. so much. There is an unreasonable amount of custom milling done on that machine, uh, ju just on the extruder and the, the mount. And I'm looking at this saying, you know, the, so the the fan ducts and do, it doesn't come with new fan ducts. So I'm curious as to how the longer, shorter extruders. Yeah, uh, you would probably just swap that. out the fan duct. It doesn't it didn't come with spare ones. I know, but I'm saying that's what you would probably have to do is ah, just swap out the okay. ducts. Okay. Well, I I'm, they, I think they just clip on. I think they just clip yeah, on. Yeah, because it's all the, MJF. Yeah. It's all powder yeah. printed or SLS. Yeah. It's a powdered nylon. Um, yeah. and I will I I guess I kind of expected more plastic. And it's not. It's all metal. It's all machined metal. Now, yeah. will that change on the final production units? I don't know. I assume I it will. I don't think so. I, I Maybe Damn. some of the smaller stuff, but like the, the extruder is a really solid design. It um, looks like an that's orbiter. It, it does. Like, let's be yeah. honest. There's only so many ways you can make a thing that has gears that push plastic. There's going to be a lot of design similarities yeah, and like, there. I, 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 uh, I brought up in, in the Discord and we can talk about this, but I don't like the fully open extruder. You can see the planetary gears moving it. And, and a concern that I have is if you grind filament and that filament gets kind of oh. all over, it gets into those gears and the gears start to eat the filament. Then they eat themselves over time. Yeah. And they are, they are. Yeah. It's not going to add a lot of extra weight to put a thin, you know, panel there, but that is an easy fix that can be done now. Yeah. on future machines rather than it become a support problem yeah. down the line. I, I've got a feeling like my, my initial impressions are the first, like the version right now that they're selling will be very good for those that don't mind doing a little bit of wrenching if needed. Um, I, I, I really think if, if this machine pans out the way I think it is, the second revision of it is going to be killer. Yeah. Um, I'm always hesitant to recommend first revisions of a product right off the bat um, on anything. Because you never know. You never know. Even even like my X1, I had to replace control boards in it yep. because I had a pre-production one. Um, and the AMS system is on like revision four. Um, so like, yes, e like even like first revision stuff, I'm always hesitant to go say, go out and buy. But in terms of a first revision product, it's is pretty it damn good. No, but it's a damn good offering for especially for a company, a company that has that does... no experience in this zero well an fdm yeah people have always been around for a while but they do resin it's all resin and, and that's one motor right they're they're dealing with one i think yeah. that they have one that had dual motors but it's it's not more than than a couple motors this one has four z axes and each of those are individually controlled yeah. the z axis motors. well it's clipper that's easy that's easy to do a clipper though I'm not a clipper guy, right? This is my first time ever using. Just, just wait till you have to change clipper. stuff. I like literally. I already um, have. It's I, amazing. I, I rebuilt Tallboy, and so brand new controller in it, uh, tool headboard and everything. So I went from a octopus with a just an octopus mm -hmm. to a leviathan with, or sorry, a kraken with a um, a levi or a can bus tool headboard. Right, and. All I did was because I'm like, okay, so the machine's the same machine. I just changed the electronics. So I literally just took my old config that I knew worked, copy and paste it into the new one, and just went through and just changed the pin assignment, and it worked. Just you just go through. Okay, this this is now PG11, well, and uh, it doesn't need to be P14. reinstalled or uh, recompiled. No, it's just you, you, you there. Save and close. Save yeah. and close. Restart. <laughs> it was the issue that I was having where uh, the PWM on the bed was causing my lights to dim. Uh, yeah, you just add a line. Yeah, add a line, paste the line, and it yeah. didn't have to restart anything. It was, yeah. it was just, it was just there, and you know that I will say from you know, I, I've I've custom built Marlin, uh, you know things like the Dbot is well the Dbot's rep wrap because it's a it's duet, but I've done. I wish more Marlin. machines had rep wrap. I do. I, I wish more. I honestly, I'm not a fan of Clipper and commercial machines. Um, some, some cases like in, in the Magneto, it makes sense. 
because like they got the linear motor. So they had to do some custom stuff there and config. So their version of Clipper isn't the main release of Clipper. They are running on Clipper 11. We're currently on Clipper 12 mm -hmm. um, and they have forked it, but it's forked for their needs. It's not like, oh shit, we're, we're changing it and removing stuff. It's like, no, we, it's not we like had Sovel's make, fork. We had to add some special sauce to it, which by the way, you can look at it's on the GitHub. You can download yep. it and see what we changed, but we, we, we have to have our own slightly modified version to make it work with our machine, but it's still full clipper. So if you want to add crow's nest or Obico or anything that, yeah, it's running normal main sale. So you have the whole main, they didn't do the Creality thing where they slapped some paint on it, ripped out half the features and called it Creality OS, which Creality, you're not fooling anyone. I, it might work with your marketers, but calling Clipper Creality OS and removing functionality doesn't make it your own thing. It makes it shit. You know, and the worst part is shit. that K1 and the K1 Max and the K1C could actually give Bamboo a run for their money if Creality if gave a damn QC. about the software and QC. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. it, it, it it could. And, you know, th this new Frozen Acro I'm watching out as well. Because, like, boy, did we just copy-paste a bamboo and change its colors? Oh, the tool head. Everyone uses the bamboo tool head now. But it, it, it's it's it, it's a slightly curved mm -hmm. off-white tool head with a big 50-15 fan in the middle. Um, they all use the same tool head now. I don't understand it, it either. Like, I get that it works, but why? Because... It, because that's what they do. They just copy paste. It's it's just copy paste, copy paste, copy. It's paste. just easier to copy paste, right? It is. It is instead of like that's why you know I'm giving props to Magneto as much as I can because holy shit, they're doing something different. Everything they're actually like, like dude, yeah. I look at that machine and say, yeah, they started yeah. from a blank slate, effectively blind to what competitors were doing, and said yeah. we're going to challenge the norm. We're going to do things. I mean. It, it, kind of the same thing that bamboo did with the x1 carbon they're going to challenge the norm they're going to do things different and they're going to look at things that people have thought like mark wanted me to look at the safety and say is this thing like it level safe for a company like yours because let's be real a two thousand dollar printer is not a, its core target audience going to be end users. It's going to be no. small businesses. It's going to be prosumers. entry level. Yeah, prosumers, entry level industrial prototyping shops yep. that want an industrial grade machine. And the cosplay people. I, I know uh, Daryl has one off Earth. Uh, he has. Yeah, I don't one. know. I don't know how much we can talk about the other. I don't know how many people have actually. He's been posted. Public. He's posted about. He has. It. He's okay. posted that he has one. Yeah, and like seeing some of his stuff, I'm like, damn. But yeah, yeah, dude, this is like perfect for doing helmets and stuff because it's the oh, length yeah. that you need. Oh yeah, yeah. Keyboard, it'll do keyboards really easily. Although the 300 Z is kind of wasted on that, but well, like it, it, it's. I, I do like that it's a larger format machine. Yeah. I won't call it a full frame. Like, there's no like stipulation on what is a small, medium, and large size 3D printer. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like high flow. What is high flow? What is the actual metric? Anything thing? above 12 cubic millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that that's what I that's what I consider. Anything that's above a V6 is high flow, apparently. Mm -hmm. But is it really? And then you have ultra high flow. What is ultra high flow? Um, so we never I, have a standardization. I, it, it's like in this my industry. toasty boy. My my toasty boy isn't a high temp printer. It's a higher temp printer. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Can, can, it, does the hot end keep up with the machine? It is. It, it's in. If yes, then it's a good enough hot end. I don't like sufficient flow is all i care about does it flow enough to do what i tell it to do if yes it's good enough i really don't care if it's an ultra super duper mega yeah, flow like hot end i will probably never install does it keep up the, with the machine yes we're good i'll probably never install the ultra high flow on the magneto x i don't need it and like we talked about earlier from a business standpoint like from a small business standpoint i speed is not normally a big deal is it awesome uh, here, I'll even show something off that I'm currently prototyping. This, this is, this is, oh, you have the same field monitor, don't you? Yeah. Is oh, it is the, your battery overheating? Do you have the F6 Plus V2? Is that what you run? I don't know. It's whatever one I bought on Amazon like a okay. month ago. If that's the one that you ha bought, I have now made a cooler for it because it overheats. The screen will overheat. Really? Yeah. How and long? It, it depends. It depends on how hot the ambient is and if there's any wind. If there's wind, you're okay. But, okay, because it's like 15C in my garage. Right yeah, now. We, we've had a couple, like when we were filming at Prusa, we had it overheat and it corrupted the clip that we were doing. We had to completely refill oh. a clip and because it we power our camera from the screen as well, because why not? Oh, yeah, I do that too. Yeah. yeah. And so I designed it so I can put in 
a go in please thank you i can put in a battery and it will instantly turn the fans on now they're only okay. running 12 volt but this is the one i got uh no it's slightly different but if we can talk later we can see if, if the measurements okay. for the grills are the same i can just provide you with this model um i'm running 12 volt fans right now but i might go down to 5 volt but that's the first revision of this is right here. It was actually in the trash. Yeah. I just had to pull it out. Um, both of these, I spent less than three hours printing them. I spent about yeah. four or five hours in CAD. We will have this available to Patreon and we'll be selling it on all the platforms relatively soon once I'm comfortable with it. But I have to go put it outside in the Florida sun for, I don't know, if it can survive two hours and not die. I'm probably not going to be filming for two hours straight. They, Sony's can't no. do more than 30 minutes without a new clip anyways. Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Sony's what, will what only... Sony? When you're filming my a sixty them, My A6400 will do until I turn it off. It, when the screen is on, when you're actually recording with it, it should do only 30-minute clips. Unless you oh, record. no. I've, I've, I've recorded... Uh, Interesting. Me... My 6500 doesn't. You're, you're going to make me look into my raw folders here. No, because, it's it's uh, okay either way. Duff says I need to add a little switch to it. I'm not going to do that. As soon as I put the battery in, I want the uh, the fans to turn on. If those, if these two little 30 by 10 fans destroy this massive 8,900 milliamp hour battery, we have other yeah. concerns that we should be dealing with. I just want the cooling on all the time. Who cares? Yeah, here you go. Yeah, this is uh, one of the clips from my, uh, the I, I actually used my, my A6400, which is my A cam, as my overhead camera for the uh, when I was modding the N Nintendo DS, and yeah, that's a uh, a 32 minute clip at 4K, 100 megabit a second. Oh, I got yelled at by uh, by by Joel for running 100 megs a second. He said, "You don't need to run 100, run 50." It's the what? same quality. I'm like, but it can go to 100. He said, it doesn't matter. Your file I, size is so I record at 4K so 100, and I render out my final video that I upload to YouTube at 80 megabit. We do 4K, well, 1440p at 30, 4K at 50. Yeah, I, I do 80, because uh, that's what DaVinci defaults to for high quality, if you tell it to just, like, keep a constant God, bit your rate. file sizes are big. <laughs> yeah. I, I, my final but video is fiber. usually, like, a 20. I, I don't. Yeah, I got fiber. I have I 20 care. meg up, so I have to be conscious. <laughs> I got gig that. up. I got 1,000 megabits. Yeah, like we're, we're running. We're running tube a, is like this. We're running a five a five meg stream right now because if I go much higher than that, it it it, it oh. overloads. Um, I I do my streams at fourteen forty p, um, sixty fps, eighteen hundred meg uh megabit, so eighteen megabit upload. I hate you. Um, <laughs> so I do that for a couple reasons. Uh, my main camera when I stream is a four K camera. Mm -hmm. So when I do my like punches and whatnot, since it's fourteen forty p, when I do a a, a punch in. On that 4K camera, you still have the same pixel density for the most part. So you don't have the quality drop as if I was doing 4K or dropping to like 1080p. Um, and also the way YouTube works for streaming, it allocates your 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 bit rate based on your resolution and your frame rate that you're uploading it to. Yep. So if you're uploading to YouTube at 1080p 30, I think you can max out at like 6 megabit. That's it. Yep. Um, anything beyond that, it, it can't handle it. Yeah, we but push 1080p do... 60 right now. Yeah, we don't need more um, so for a stream like this. 1080p 60, you can do up to 12, I believe. Uh, but 1440p 60, my internet won't handle that. <laughs> oh, oh, well, yeah. So 1440p 60, you could you get you're allowed up to 18 megabit. Um, I would do 4K. The problem with 4K is it adds a latency, so you have like the different options for how quickly like it is. Yeah. Um, 1440p and 1080p uh 60, you can only you can't do the fastest one. Yeah, I might stream latency. The moment you go to 4K. To yeah, so at four at four K, it's the slowest one, which is like thirty seconds. So if I say something in chat, it takes like I have to sit there and look at chat for like thirty seconds before people respond to it. So right now, I think I have like an eight second buffer, uh, which is which is enough. It's it, it's pretty normal. Yeah, it. But I I, I was we were talking about product testing, then we got into camera yeah, stuff. Product testing. Um, what I found out for this was there was no easy way to attach it to the screen without like drilling holes. And I said, no, nah, we're not doing that. So I made little areas where I could just stick VHB down because that's all it needs. It needs three little pieces yeah, VHB. of VHB and we're done. And you can't remove a screw that's already there and then just replace it with like a longer one or something. Nope, because they're oh. screwing into plastic and I didn't want to deal with that. Uh, do you have a quarter inch on the side you could tap into? 
Yeah, but it's not on that side. Ah. Yep. So that's that's yep. the uh, that's the side with the. Uh, it's not going to focus as it's focusing on my face. Yeah, I got the camera with the two camera HDMI out, yeah. and the and the eight volt out. Um, you could you probably could have like an arm come underneath and tap into the bottom quarter inch to hold it. I could, but VHB also works just fine. Yeah, v- yeah, VHB is great. I love VHB. Yeah, but um, I, I've got I've got printers that the entire electronics compartment is held on with VHB and nothing but VHB, and it it works fine. And like it, that was one of those things where I said, all right. What are my use cases for this product? My, I, I need it to fit into my bag. I'm never going to put the screen into my bag with, with the battery in it. So I don't care about a switch, right? I know some people care about switches. I don't care about the switch. Um, I need it to be small, compact, and I need it to not take up a ton of extra space because we're space constrained, especially when we travel. Um, yeah. Oh, I know. That's why I got this guy. And so I can't do proper product testing right now because it is 74 degrees Fahrenheit in here and it is 56 degrees Fahrenheit outside and raining. So I I can't test it under what would be the worst possible conditions, right? In direct sunlight, screen at 100%, battery ripping, no wind, right? I can't test yeah. it in any of those cuz like if you if you're in 100 degree weather and there's wind, it's probably not going to overheat cuz you're you're passing air through the channels. The testing for me that I can do inside my home right now is just put a battery on it, see if it dies. I had a battery on it for two hours last night. It was fine. There you go. Well, it's like the Magneto X. So uh, the issue I'm having with the linear motor for, I, I'm not going to go fully into oven. details. I'm not because... putting it in an oven. God damn. This stuff says an <laughs> oven. Chris Catless has a closed printer. I should. I could put it in the Chidi. I could use yeah, the Chidi. There and you go. use put the Chidi chamber heater. I mean, if, if I can use my borons to heat up pop tarts when I'm under COVID lockdown, you you can use it to test your. Uh, <laughs> you used to boron to heat up a pop tart. And oh, did you, did you miss? Okay, so when I went to Murph last year, no, or two years ago, the first Murph I went to, um, I got COVID. So when I came back, I did a COVID test, and I immediately uh, it's it like, oh, you got COVID, and this is during like when you had to quarantine and whatnot. Right. So I went and lived in my basement for five days straight after that, and um. My wife, I, I had I had a uh, electric kettle so I could boil water for tea and Mr. Noodles. And then I had like a case of Chef Boyardee and Pop-Tarts and I used my boron to heat up the Chef Boyardee and the Pop-Tarts. So I would just turn the bed to 100 and just leave the can or whatever on it for like half an hour and just heat them up. It worked. It Remember worked. kids, if it's jank and it works, it's not jank. Yeah. It's a it's a hot plate. It's a 100 degree hot plate. It's enough to boil water. I mean, yeah, I, um, well, it'll I, take a I, long I think, time. Uh, but yeah. I, I, like the plan, I think my April Fool's video for this year is I'm going to try and cook a steak on one of my printers. So we'll see how that goes. Um, you got to get real I, hot for that. Well, well, you, um, Toasty can get 120 on the bed reliably. So Which I, will if cook I sous- a steak, but it's going to be a sponge. Well, I'm going to sous vide it first. Yeah, but you're not going to see you're not going to sear it at 120 C. I'm going to try, damn it. I'm it's gonna not going to work. <laughs> I'm going to try. Well, don't sous vide the steak. Let the printer sous vide the steak. Uh, you know, I don't think that would work. So you need they need the water moving for a sous vide to be. Pro- I could do it on a on a bed flinger and just have the bed slowly move back and forth. I could do that. Or you could just add, put it on a printer like an octopus or that has octopus or a kraken, and just have a have a little motor with a fan in it or a parasol. Yeah, just tape, tape a spoon to the, the hot <laughs> end. And just have yes, it. yes, tape a spoon to the hot end. Do that, <laughs> dude. Do- <laughs> And it runs like a six-hour G-code cycle of the hot end just stirring the water. <laughs> you know, oh, honestly, I would watch that video. And shit, if you don't do that, yeah. I'll do that. Okay, I got, I got, I think that's what I'm doing for my April Fool's video this year. Oh, no, um, I, do, do, I, do I tell you what we're doing for ours? No, don't spoil it. Don't spoil okay. it. All right. Our, if, um, if you're a part of our Discord, which is at the ten dollar tier higher, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a plug for myself. You can you can plug yourself there you next. Go. Don't worry. At the ten dollar tier and higher, you get to come hang out in our Discord. You get to find out the really dumb things that we that we do. You get to see live product development because I designed this completely inside of our Discord, and uh, you get to learn what we're doing for the April Fool's joke. And thank you to the Nocturnist who is here in the chat who gave us the ridiculous idea to do this thing. Because yeah, it, it <laughs> it's it's gonna be a deal. Yeah, that that that's yeah, this is gonna be fun. Um but yeah, back to product testing, product testing. But yeah, so <laughs> the I'm I'm okay. Welcome to the so ADHD the reason I podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um the reason I haven't done any videos on the Magneto X or anything, like 
I know Teaching Tech did his. Yeah. Um, and I've got nothing against him doing a video, but I, I, I personally don't see the point in doing a video on a. It's not the final product. I mean, I know exactly so, what the point is. It, it's oh, I know it's views it's or whatever, views. and it's yeah, he's a YouTuber. It is what it is. It it's is a what it is. Yeah. Uh, the problem, it, like, but here's the thing. Um, has he been testing it? I, so, I don't know. Yeah, I know he said a few things to it, but like, this is they're testing machines, not content creation machines yet. But and I think that's what happened with the A ones, because if you notice, the A ones got sent to a lot of people who, no offense, and I don't mean this in any bad term, but they're content creators. And what did, what did they do? They made content with the printers. They didn't test the printers. They might have, like, obviously, they printed stuff a on it. A little something, something, but, they but were, not, like, you know. But they were they were doing it for videos. They were like, okay, content time, let's, let's start doing this because there's an embargo date and 20 people are going to come out with a review at the exact same moment. Yep. So as far as I know, that's the only testing that machine got was internal testing. And then they sent some pre-production clear units and production units to some YouTubers who made videos. Which are cool. I would pay more for clear printers, by the way. Anyone? Oh, that, yeah. That... Oh, no. We need to bring back uh, clear translucent purple. <sighs> we need more translucent purple. Like oh, products. like the Nintendo yes. days. Yeah. Yes. We need to bring that shit back. Yeah, like my um, shirt color but translucent like where is dude it? just well i'm wearing an undershirt but if i wasn't wearing uh, an undershirt this would be I a got, much I got my uh my dji mic 2 that came with my osmo pocket 3 mm -hmm. and it's you can kind of see yeah there, yeah it's yeah, yeah. Translucent it, it, it's case. smoky atomic purple thank you someone atomic had purple. the damn color yeah Heck atomic yeah. purple uh, we need more more atomic purple electronics but like the magneto test group is pretty much like People who are actually using the machines and testing them. Like yeah. I know, I know a few people that have them that are content creators too. I think most of us technically are to some degree, but they're like people that are actually like wrenching on the machines and actually putting them through the paces, which yeah. I like to see more. I, I, I much prefer a smaller, more dedicated team actually working and, and testing something than he, these are the people that'll get us views on the printer. And I, I, so. I, I also like the idea of having a media embargo during testing, right? Yes. Give it to content creators, fine. Give it to testers, fine. Yep. Give it to content creators that are also testers, perfect. Because then then you get the best of both worlds, right? When you when you send printers to a Nero 3D or, you know, a or am I supposed to use Nero 3D or Canuck Creator? I really don't know. Okay, so so for the branding, so I'm Nero 3D the Canuck Creator. Eventually at some point the 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 Nero 3D the Canuck Creator part will drop off. It'll just be Canuck Creator. Canuck Creator is a YouTube channel. So I am Nero 3D. Actually, my name's Taylor. Hi. Um, Gross. I but like Nero 3D is my online name. name. Nero 3D is my online name. Um, the YouTube channel is Canuck Creator. Yeah. Because I, 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 for those that don't know, my YouTube channel is like literally my YouTube channel from like 2006. So if we like, you know, let me, let me. If you go way yeah. back. Yeah. Don't ever so go back. If you pull in up my channel, go far. to videos and look by oldest. Here's my guild killing uh, Ragnaros in tw 17 years ago and yeah. some EVE Online stuff. And then why you left that stuff up, stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I yeah. would have nuked so th it. There was a bunch of stuff that I got rid of. Um, for a while, my channel was Nero1911 because mm -hmm. I used to do IDPA and IPSC yep. and USPSA. So I did have a bunch of pew pew stuff that I've gotten rid of because YouTube. Yep. Um, but yeah, so it, it is like I didn't plan to be a YouTuber. It just kind of happened. So my YouTube channel is my YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> um, so when I started it, it was just actually, it was originally called Naroga, which is what my, uh, World of Warcraft character was called. So like, oh, wow. Wow. Sorry. The quality of that. Yeah. Wow. No, Naroga. That is my, that, that was my original World of Warcraft character's name. Beautiful. Um, this, this is on my laptop with a 40 man raid back in the day with fraps running, as you could see from the fraps. Yeah, um, buddy, old school fraps. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, you know, the quality was great back oh, then dude. when recording. Truly, um, truly. So I, it was Nero. It was just, it was Naroga for a bit. Then I changed it to Uber Nero, which is like my discord name now. Um, and then I, I was Nero 1911 for a bit. And then when I got started doing 3D printing stuff, it was Nero 3DP. Because originally I was going to do 3DP Nero, but then I'm like, wait, that's the same like short form as Joel because he's 3D printing nerd. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, no, I don't want I don't want to be the same. So Nero 3DP. And then I dropped the P uh, because people are making DP jokes, um, but also because I want to do more than just 3D printing. 
So like I do the, the CNC stuff, modeling. I've done some FPV stuff on the channel. So it's, it's I want it to be more open. And then I'm like, wait a minute. So, and then what got me was Smurf. At Smurf, a ton of people like that, guys in suits. Oh, hey, what do you do? Oh, I'm a YouTuber. What's your channel? Oh, it's Nero 3D. The heck does that mean? <laughs> it's like, oh, it's my online name. And so if I go, oh, hey, Canuck Creator. I'm a Canadian. I make stuff. Okay, cool. That makes like it. I think it's a better brand for a YouTube channel. It is in terms of like, so so it I'm, is hard I'm gradually to rebrand a channel. It, over. it is it is horrible to rebrand yep. a channel. Yep. Um, it, it's some cases it works pretty well. Um, yeah. There's a few YouTubers that I've watched that have like just renamed their channel to just their name, and I'm like, okay, but you watch the channel for the person in that case. Um, but like uh, breaks and makes. Yep. Um. He went back well, to 3D Maker 3, Noob, didn't he? He went back to 3D Maker Noob because yeah. he rebranded. So in case you haven't noticed, not much has actually changed. I still have the Nero 3D logo. My intro is still the same. Um, it, the only thing I've changed is the actual branding on the channels right now. Yep. So the YouTube channel is still Nero 3D. So like, But if, it's if at I'm Canuck doing a, Creator. Yeah, it's at Canuck Creator. So right now, if I'm doing a game stream, um, I, I literally turn this on and turn that off. And it's cool. Okay, I'm Nero 3D Games for a game stream. So that's that's how I do that. Um, so I haven't updated the logo yet. That will come in the future. And then at some point, I'll drop the Nero 3D the part. So it's like over the next six months, I'm gradually like slowly changing it over. So it won't be as much of a shock. Yep. So because a lot of people, if like the channel name changes in the logo at the same time and it comes up in their feed, they're like, what the heck is this? And they ignore it. And then you're done. That's the problem. New Model Workshop brought up a, a thing that I've always agreed with, but I, I I think it's a good talking point for us. Give test units to the YouTubers who produce the most constructively critical content on your product niche. How do you feel about that? Um, yes and no. Like and personally, I don't think YouTubers should get priority for anything. That's like, a yes, that's a very fair point. Obviously, though, but here's the thing: we live in the real world. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Um, and if you're a company and you want to sell something, you want to get eyes on it. So That's obviously right. you're going to rope in the, the big, the, the biggest content creators you can, um, which I think Magneto is doing pretty good. I, I know some big names that have a Magneto X. They Joel just got about it. Joel, Joel has one. Um, so, but like their first group of testers, I think like there, there weren't any big names on that. I was there. You were there. I wasn't in the but first like, group of testers. Well, I mean, like before, like Joel got an invite and all that. Oh, like, well, the, okay, the, yeah, yeah. Like until Joel, it was it was you know people who have Twitter and you know small YouTube channels, like people who actually would be using this machine, actually using it. Well, and, and not like okay, I got the machine now. I gotta okay, I gotta set my camera up. I gotta get my lighting, my tripod. It's like no, I got the machine unboxed. Let's load some filament and print some shit. That's the kind of people you want to testing this machine first. It is, and personally. Doing any content on a machine that's not released yet, I personally like that's why if you notice it just sits in the I don't even keep it, I turn it off when I go live. I don't want the machine to be featured until it's done. Because, like, well, for one, I can't print with it right well, now. And if something goes problem. wrong on stream, it's yeah. oh the printer's broken. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's like um when mine first showed up, I've had to replace a board and do a, a software update. Um, an issue with noise that somebody who you know might critique it on it's like cool that issue was resolved a week ago mm -hmm. so like there's no point critiquing a machine that's not done yet on things that might not even be there when it's going to be released like oh uh the, the the motors have a high idle noise okay cool that's a software update that takes a few seconds that it can fix yeah or my lights are flickering like your lights flickered easy um, software config fix yeah. yeah that that's a that's a non-issue but somebody who got that machine who was content brain who's like i want to make content on it oh my lights are flickering oh no they need to fix that it's like yeah that, that's one line in the config it won't be there on the production but now people go oh i watched the video the lights flicker when you use it it's like, not a good machine it's like that that's why i'm not doing anything on it until it's like okay it's 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 in a release state okay my, uh, now i'll start doing content on it. so those printers have thousand watt heated beds I'm going to yep. turn it to like 700 watts. I I'm, I'm inside a clipper. I'm just going to set it's it, it's maximum. Don't do that. No, don't do that anymore. Nope. Why nope. not? Because it, it, it doesn't actually drop the voltage. It it, it plays with the, the cycle time, the duty cycle. Oh, damn it. Um, yeah. So you're still it. it it's I don't want you, the full thousand watts because it it means that I it won't it, taco. It won't taco that that it's been kind of an old, old rumor no, no. thing. That we I, we only have 1800 watts 
on or t- technically a little farther than 1800 watts on the wall and okay. i have one circuit on this side of the room one circuit on this side of the room and there's like 18 printers on this one circuit and that means if i'm heating up the magneto nothing else can really be running effectively oh. well here no you you can run multi i've i've run five or six full-size borons on the same 15 amp circuit no as long issue. as they're it, all it, not heating up their beds at the same time exactly you gotta yeah. you gotta you gotta delay it that's why uh phoenix for example has four separate beds so that they they start up sequentially mm-hmm. so when you tell that printer heat up it heats up one bed then it heats up the next one then it heats up the third and by the time then the fourth one has kind of started already heating up from ambient yep um so that's what's done on that yeah it, it and i i i i i missed the the total point of the question which was you know uh, construct uh, constructive criticism. I do want to see review machines go out to people that are not just going to be yes men and women, right? Or yes people. I want to see, you know, like Bamboo and I have a spotted relationship to say the least. But if they wanted to send me something, I would accept it because that oh, means here. that they're going to respect what I have to say. Regardless if that you don't have to agree with me to respect what i did here's a funny one i don't know if you saw this in our discord somebody in a 2a forum apparently bet a hundred bucks that we would never make that video the log video the dude paid up yesterday good for him and i sent him a personal invite to the discord because he wants to have a chat and i said dude not only do i want to have a chat i want to record it because not not only did you call out i didn't even know about the call out to be honest um but they followed through with it. Yeah. That is bro level. It's okay to be year. wrong. It is okay to be like, I, this is something I hate with the well, internet nowadays. And here's what they don't know. Whatever okay the net wrong. is on Patreon, I'm going to donate to whatever charity they want. And I'm hoping it's go. SMF, but I'm going to donate the net because it, it, the goal of that video was not to make money. The goal of that video was to tell the truth. And I don't want that financial thing. So I'd rather it get donated somewhere. Yeah. Like it, that's something like it's something I really like don't like with the current state of like online discourse. Yep. It's okay to be wrong and it's okay to change your opinion based on new data. It's that okay is expected. To do that. It is expected to change your opinion based on new data. But but people like no, you you said this. You are always going to be like it's like no, I like I'm learning. Bamboo for example, I know we always go back to bamboo. It's the um, it's the one to go back to, sorry. But literally, the the moment I put out that first video, when I was live on stream, yeah, and you're hot, and I started went, smoking. Why is my machine smoking? Yep. Um, and I turned it off, and I turned it back on, and I replicated. And after a minute of it smoking, I went, "Oh shit, this doesn't have thermal runaway. What the, what the heck?" Um, they they haven't talked to me since then. Yeah, I haven't received an email. I haven't received a DM. They completely just cut me off. Which that's not how you should do it. You should be nope. reaching out, going, "Hey, what the." going on with the machine let's figure this out right um now granted was i a little reactionary yes because you know i don't think anybody would blame you or react differently in that scenario i was live i had several hundred people in chat and a machine that i had been praising as being a great machine is suddenly thermally running away or at least i thought um now granted they come out and like oh we we had it set for three minutes we thought three minutes would be okay we've dropped it down to what everyone else uses 30 seconds um, but they yeah. didn't disclose that anywhere so i had no way of knowing it takes three minutes for thermal runaway to kick in at the time and there's no way um, that like, it is safe to do that kind of thing yeah. right you, you you would be well above it and yeah i i don't agree with the way that you react that you reacted and then it's like so when, when we released this video people people came out and said oh you're just doing it for the views you're just doing it for the money i said did, did you watch the did you watch the first 30 seconds of that video it's no, not didn't. monetized no, it's not monetized i don't care about the money i care about the truth it's, it's why it's that projection. one hour and eight minute recording was cut down to 23 minutes in one second it was done that way so that we removed as much you know opinion and the entire section where i talked about would the average user care the average user probably won't care that is opinion that is not fact and yep. uh you know it, it and then there are people that are trying to like be apologists and i'm like well all right. I mean, I, I guess, but don't come after me for it. it. I showed you what's there. Don't come after yeah. me for it. So at the end of the day, they said they weren't logging certain information and it turns out they are. Yeah. Is that that's basically the TLDR is they say we don't log this, but it is being logged. Now, granted that information, they, you know, when you send the log, you have the option to send that info or not. So it's not like it's automatically you do now cloud. you do now. Oh, you do now. You okay. did it. You didn't always have that. Okay. You didn't. So always have but that it's answer. still at the end of the day, 
The it's TLDR interesting is they say they don't record certain info, but they do. But you know what's interesting local. is that was added right after there was a chat with the X1 Plus team. I know. And yeah, all yeah. of the sudden, it just happened to show up. It's so weird. It, that is Even the though one we've been calling it out on... for months, it's one so of my weird. Biggest... Yeah. One of my biggest critiques with Bamboo is how pretty much everything with them is reactionary instead of proactive. Dude. Like, they pretty much won't do a thing until there's a stink about it. If that recall, if all we had from that recall was that second blog post, I would have been praising them. I would have yeah. been praising them. Oh, said, they had you come guys out right did from a the start. great job on it. That is exactly how I want to see a recall go. Yeah. You know, there wasn't an email leak. There wasn't, oh, you know, God, different that. different discourse being sent to content creators. And yeah. while that might have been a mistake, it is irrelevant. It was different discourse sent to content creators. You would have seen myself and others that have been critical in the past be 100 yep. percent supportive of it saying you guys made a mistake which okay it happens you got in front of it you issued an official recall and you're providing financial compensation my my dude that is absolutely clap worthy but instead i gave him a b i gave him a b instead of a b plus or an a minus i don't think they deserve an a period because an a would be you never have the problem but you get a B and that's still a passing grade. Yeah. But it means that if this happens again, hopefully not when, if that they now understand the way to do it. But yeah. I feel like uh, maybe it's because they, they've created a, an us versus them mentality. I don't know. Um, they have. And, and I think a lot of it has to do with their uh, social medias. They really need to get on. Attacking like, small I, creators I, their discord. Their discord has cleaned up quite a bit. Their Facebook um, they're, has, they're, and holy shit. The, well, it's a Facebook. Even the Voron Facebook group, which is unofficial, but we still have a few mods in there. Everything about Voron's it. unofficial. It's okay. a complete... <laughs> er, er, yeah. Well, we have an official Discord. And Fair. we do have a forum. There is an official Voron forum, by the way, for those that like prefer forums. Um, but yeah, you, you go on... on uh, And it's not just Bamboo. Let's be honest, a lot of companies are like this. You yep. go on any other subreddits or whatever, and it it's... It, it, Personally, like I don't get the whole "Hey guys, um, this machine is better than the machine I bought five years ago. Give me updates." Like I don't yeah. get posts like that, but that's what their subreddit's filled with. Um, and like people just like you know, oh, this other machine is shit. It's like cool. You're you're preaching to the choir for internet points. Like that's not any constructive criticism or constructive conversation. You're just you know walking into the circle and just hey guys, I enjoy the circle too. It's like eh, but uh, yeah. I don't know. They they really they've cleaned it up a bunch. Their, their Discord used to be horrible. The Discord's got a better handle on it, but it's still very tribal. And the thing is, though, if you're not being paid by the company or you're not actively involved by the company, why the heck are you simping for them? Like, why are you simping for a company? Like, I don't get it. Like, I have bias. OK, me. Too. I have a Voron bias. Guess what? I'm on the Voron team. I have a reason to be biased towards Voron and to, you know, if somebody insults Voron, have a little bit more, be born protective of Voron. I'm on the Voron team. I yep. disclose that often. But like, I, I bought an Elgato green screen that's behind me here. I'm not, you know, anytime somebody insults Elgato, I'm not like, oh, you kind of insult Elgato. They make a good green screen. You know, it kind of clips over in this corner here, as you can see. Whatever. But like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's a company. Yeah. You you don't work for them. You they owe you nothing. Yeah. Well, they owe you a machine that you paid for, but you owe them nothing. Like I, I don't get it. I, I I don't get the tribalism what? as much. Like, yeah, don't get me wrong. It's fun to, you know, we shit on ANN and whatnot. Like, yeah. They deserve I mean, it. They deserve it. Um because they should have issued a recall. They did nothing about it and they just oh, quietly they disappeared into the ether. Um, yeah, they're still around. But yeah, that's but they the don't thing. That's why I, I also hold Bamboo to a higher standard than these other because people are like, well, you know, Anet's had issues and Prusa had issues back in the day. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, cool. That was five these are completely 10 years different ago. companies. This yeah. is this is in the past. We're talking modern 3D printing companies, and this company that has set themselves up on this pedestal above all the other companies. So they're going to be held to a higher standard. Yep. They get the cr criticism because they are the shining light. You 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 critique you. You, you cut the grass that grows the highest. That's right. So they are up there. They are doing very well. I give them praise often, but that also means they are subject to more criticism and they deserve it because their ecosystem is very noob happy. You have a ton of people 
that are getting into it, that know nothing about 3D printing, that don't know uh, the ifs, ands, or buts about doing anything in maintenance with a 3D printer. They, they expect to buy this and it's going to print stuff. And then the moment, you know, the sock falls off the hot end and the clip that holds the heater on it is in the sock still. And they just assume it's fine because they didn't see it because it's not something you notice. And it starts getting hot and burns and melts stuff. Or, you know, the fact that like my load cell sensor in the bed is failing and I got to replace the bed wire. Um, that, that's, that, that's oh, yeah, I got to do that because my machine's down right now. Or the fact that, hey, the X. Y bearings require an entire replacement of the gantry to replace a 30 cent bearing that you have yep. to pay a hundred bucks to buy the gantry replacement. Yep. Like that stuff. I, you know, they get critiqued on their machine is horrible for user serviceability. It was never designed replace, that way though. It was never designed to be it, used. It, yeah, it was designed a, to be thrown away. Yep. The, the, the Apple, they, they've admitted they want to be the Apple of 3d printing. If a, I blow a bear, by the way, Prusa, th that is a phenomenal thing to want to be right. Oh, I am, yeah, I am here for it. Apple has built a brand around. We are not going to be fundamentally the best at any specific thing, except maybe like a camera or something like that. But we're going to provide you with the best user experience on the market, bar none. And Apple absolutely destroys the competition yeah. in terms of user experience. Hell, the unboxing experience of an Apple product is better than any other cell phone on the market. Right. They, they, they under, and I'm an Android guy through and through Android windows through and through. And yeah, my, my, my S 20 F E came in a generic box. It did have a charger yeah. though. Um, I got a pixel six. It yeah. came with a charger. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. That's, that's the joke we get to make now, but you know, I, but here's I, the thing. If, I, I if, guess if you're just... setting yourself on that pedestal, mm -hmm you have to deliver and yep. you can't rush out a product nope. that, you know, if, if you're, if you're setting up the printer for, if you're selling the printer that just works for everyone, you have to assume somebody's going to take your printer and bent and tilt it over at some point. And you can't just go, well, it's not meant to be tilted over. It's like, Nope, you made the printer for the newbies. You got to, you, you got to reap what you sow and you got to have your printers got to be newbie proof. Well, and that's why Apples having, are newbie proof. And that's why having your internal engineers and maybe a few larger content creators be the beta test. It is not, is not uniquely appropriate. Well, it's not a bad thing to I guess I, I see the value in sending printers to YouTubers because it is the cheapest advertising they can do, right? Oh, it's dirt cheap. It, it's, it's dirt cheap. And for companies, small businesses that are looking to get your name out there, sponsoring your favorite content creators that might also be the niche that you're going after is one of the cheapest things you can do in terms of decent advertising. Just make sure that their niche fits what you're looking for. Yeah. But you also shouldn't just send it to people that are going to be the yes men and women and people of the industry. You want to send it to those who are going to be a little bit more critical, right? The people that are just like blatantly like, uh, who, who's the guy that always takes the printers apart? How he keeps getting them, I don't know. It, Vector 3D? Vector 3D. How, why companies keep sending him printers, I don't know. Because they know what's going to happen. Maybe they well, want it, him to do it. I don't know. Um, and, and to be clear, I like him. He's a great guy. Adam oh, yeah. is a phenomenal a guy. guy uh, great content. Wonderful person to meet. Met him at Smurf. But I'm interested as to why he will get a printer when he's as good at autopsy it. When creators like us who we are known for being critical right we are known for being critical we don't get them because companies are afraid of us being critical where peel poly said we want you to be critical i want i want a company that's going to say i want you to be critical bring your concerns to us first these are beta units but if yes. we don't resolve them be critical hold us accountable because it's not about being it's not about being critical it's about holding companies accountable to what they promise and and what their goal is. That's what I that's what I look at this as. It's not about me being a hater. Cuz fundamentally, if you're in our Discord, you know this. I actually really like Bamboo as a company from the aspect that they all of a sudden awoke something within this industry oh, yeah. that we hadn't seen. And we were the likely The market was stagnant for quite a while. The past 4 years, right? When the Mark, clones. when the nothing Mark, but Ender clones, nothing, and, and we were racing to the bottom on price. All of a yep. sudden, Bamboo awoke in something within clients saying, "Wait a minute, I'm willing to pay more money for better quality." Right. Although one thing I'm not so happy we're moving towards. I remember it was Cloud. a cloud. So I got into 3D printing. Oh God, I'm I, I'm working on a video about like trends in 3D printing that I can't stand, and cloud is one of them. Yeah. Um. 
but the I remember when I first got into 3D printing was like late 2017. I remember watching a video with Joel and, mm-hmm. and Joe Prusa. And they were showing off the Mark III and how it was so quiet. Yeah. Remember when printers were quiet? Yes. And Cheating, now completely... I'm looking at you with your stupid oh, cooling fan for your freaking motherboard that doesn't need yeah. to be as loud as it is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the Cheaties, the uh, the the SOC that runs Clipper on them, um, always has a core that's always on, so you need to have constant active cooling. You can't just kick it on when but it need, when it needs it. Put a quieter fan on it. No, I'm gonna replace dude, it with a Noctua. That'll be a video or a, probably but, a you screen. Know what, you, you know how I solved it on my Cheaties? Hmm. I don't use the Cheaties. No, I mean <laughs> they're good printers. They're not bad. They're not bad, but like. Compared to my Vorons and my VZ bot and whatnot, they just don't fit in the line. I haven't gotten there yet. Give me time. All right. Yeah. That, I'm, I'm... That's and that's another thing too. I think your your our your opinion of these current like crop of enclosed core XYs is very much tinted by your previous experience in 3D printing. Yeah. So for me, when I see a bamboo or chidi or any of these other modern enclosed core XY machines, I'm like, cool. My Voron did that five years ago. So I'm gonna critique you on the user experience, the the usability of the machine. Yep. I'm not going to critique it on the machine itself because it's the same thing I've had for five years already. Like yeah. you just have a commercial version of what I've been doing DIY for half a decade. Um, so, but if you're coming from Enderland or from a clapped out Prusa Mark II, oh my God, it's the second coming of Jesus Christ. Oh it my God, it this really is. is oh my right? God. Ah. But then, so, then you, of yeah. course you're trading, you're trading silent for speed. Bring back quiet printers. Why do you think I like printing ABS so much? You don't have to crank the fans. Like my, my P1P. Smell. Well, you get used to it. Uh, <laughs> my P1P. I, ne- I never installed the curtain air fan on my P1P. I saw no need to put a curtain air system in because I don't print a lot of PLA. Right. So if you don't print a lot of PLA, there's no point for curtain air cooling. It. But every machine yeah. has curtain air cooling now with a, 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 a blow Metron tool head fan. And, the, and then you got 5160 high volts, which... Oh, constantly like it, it's i i like the mark four because it just I, that's the only printer i have in my house now that i use regularly mm-hmm. because i could just let it print yep. and it doesn't annoy people the other day i was watching a, mo- a show with the wife downstairs i had the room to the door to the printer room was open and the printer was printing and every now and then i'm like is this over we good good okay cool because i couldn't hear it yep yep i, I miss that it's it, it, now it, you can just hear them my, <laughs> my x1 before they did the update to make it a little bit quieter it's still the okay other than the vz bot it's still the quiet loudest machine i own so it, it's it's the second loudest machine now because it used to be louder but now it's quieter but it's still loud um even in the garage if i pulled up to my house and got out of my car and it was a quiet wind no windless day you're gonna hear i it. could hear it running in my garage yep it, yep. it just it makes a noise. It has a certain frequency that it was hitting that it was just you could hear it. Um, I, I so want yeah, to do more kit back builds to, 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 to try to understand that, because even though I, I have I've been doing it since 2008, since year 16, 16 years of experience in this industry and like, you know, working on printers, building printers, I have not built a printer like a Voron since I built my D bot, which was 2016, 2016, 2017, somewhere in that time. Otherwise it's, it's been Prusa kits, which hold your hand so well, they tell you when to stop and eat gummy bears. Um, and like I, I built the XL on stream. Um, and you know, what did Prusa do? Prusa knew that I was doing it because of course they did. Right. Um, yeah. So what do they do? They put staff members in the chat. So that they could not only help me when I needed it, but they also had people in there taking notes of what I got, what I got stuck on because yep. I am that slightly elevated consumer, right? And it's something that we haven't done that we're going to be doing when we do evaluate printers. We're going to do two evaluations for every machine, the evaluation from a hobbyist perspective and the evaluation from a business perspective, because I can do both. I do a lot yep. more business than I do hobby, but it's important to look at it both ways. I look at the Magneto X and say, yeah, if you're coming up from like an ender, don't buy this machine uh, because no. it's, it's 10 enders and you're going to have a hard time validating the price. But if you are a business, I would, again, 
I can't 100% recommend it at this time because we don't yeah, have, still, we don't see what the final release is. But if the final production meets all the demands that we've had, and with all the testing that's occurred and everything that that Calvin there's been buddy, back and forth with. Door? <laughs> um, Little guy just came in the room and left the door open. That's yeah, all good. Uh, Calvin! <laughs> I would assume that the Magneto X would likely end up being my top pick under 2,000, although really under 2,500 because order yeah. it with the freaking enclosure. Yeah, um, you need the enclosure for that machine. To and it would better. certainly be my favorite printer for business under $5,000. Oh, business machines are weird. And that's another thing. Like, so, oh my God. So we're, we're, we're going off the rails here. So the whole Prusa is dead because of bamboo thing. I don't think people realize how big the market is and how small the hobby market is. Once you start talking, like once yep. you start including commercial and industrial level 3d printing, how insignificant. <laughs> Want to talk like, about product, is. product testing. Prusa is the best example of product testing in oh this industry. Period. Go watch their video. Go watch the Prusa blows everyone else out. Why do you think it takes like. When I, I was, was saying there. like Vorons are like designed months before we release them because we do internal testing for months. Yeah, Prusa is like the same. They they spend a long ass time doing internal testing before they release their. There stuff. were things there that we them. saw that we can't talk about. Like they're yep. they're they're doing lots of testing. Okay, yeah, lots of testing, and yep. they prove it by printing their own parts on their farm. Could they go to yep. injection molding? Absolutely, they could, and they would save a ton of money doing it. But they don't want to do that. Because it proves the value in the product that they're producing. Regardless Plus of what it, you think of the company, to, you can't argue with that. Yeah. And, and and they would have to redesign a bunch of the parts to make them compatible for injection molding. And then anytime they do a part revision, they'd have to either take the mold out of commission and modify the mold before putting it back into commission, which costs money, welding, machine time, handwork time, or get a completely new tool designed. It, it Yes, you can get molds cheap from China. But obviously, based on the past couple of years and the way Prusa is moving to vertically integrate, like, hey, Joe, if you do want to hire an experienced mold maker, I can do that. Dude, but I'll tell you, you Prague pay, is beautiful. You, to... you would love moving there. I'm just saying. We went oh, there in probably. December. It was snowing. It was still beautiful. It was um, beautiful. I know you went after Smurf. You got, I went before I know Smurf. a few Voron people went over. Oh, you oh you went before Smurf? Yeah. It'll, so when, when oh. we release our tour of Prusa, that will be the last ever video that I filmed that will be released on this channel when I still have long hair. I still okay. had long hair when we went there. Um, oh, nice. But, uh, dude, one, the food, amazing. But, you know, and two, everything is cheap, right? The, the U.S., well, yeah. even the Canadian dollar is going to be strong there. That's I know, I, I'm so happy that often. YouTube pays me in American. Pays <laughs> me in Google pays out in American. I'll take it. But, like, I, I, I look at Prusa and say, you know, Scotty's video and even Prusa's own video show you that there's a lot of inefficiencies that they could do better. They actively choose not to because they want to make sure that they that they have a consistent quality. Is that going to be the top of the line best 3D printer on the market? No. No. But they're also not trying to be because if they were, they'd have to charge thousands of dollars more. They charge a lot of money because they do the product testing. They have a beta team. And their beta team has some content creators, has some non-content creators, has both critical and fans on it. They have people that uh, that use other machines, and they have people that are diehard fanboys that only use Prusa. But you know where they do the bulk of their product testing? In their own damn facility, where their people who work there, who are also their target market, utilize their own machines. Yep. Yep. That That's, like, Prusa that's has testing. their thing, and they are very good at what they do. Yep. And... I don't think people realize there isn't as much of an overlap with their target market and like bamboo users and whatnot. Like Prusa has their thing. Why there do you was think a lot of overlap. There was a lot of overlap. It's not anymore. Not so much. Even yeah. right now, even with Voron, we've noticed a downtick because for a while, there is a group of people that want to be able to branch and tinker on their printer, but also want a good printer. But there's also a group of people that want a good printer and they're okay with doing wrenching if they need to. Those people used to build Vorons and buy Prusas. Yep. Now those people are going, well, I just want the good printer. I was okay with building it, but if I could just buy it, I'll buy it. They're yep. just buying bamboos now. But yep. the thing is, there's also the opposite where people that want to wrench and tinker, but they also want a good printer. So we've lost a portion of the market but there's still a full other portion of the market that's still going to keep buying. Yeah. And like, speaking with various people in both low level and high level positions at some other companies, let's be honest. Bruce is not scared of bamboo. 
Like no. just going off their latest video, they're doing better than ever. They're the, the Mark Four is their best selling printer ever. Like in terms of volume sold per like time period. Yep. Like they're doing just fine. I saw the buckets of parts. They had yeah thousands of, is of doing printers and in inventory worth of printed parts. Fine. Yeah, they're not it's, going anywhere. It's Creality that's scared. It's it's the other. It's the ones companies. that are cloning bamboo. They're the ones yep. that are scared. The it's Creality. It's Cheaty. It's I was what are some other like a lot Frozen. of them have fallen off. Elegu, the, Frozen, the Adventurer from Flash Forward, the Adventurer Five M. My brother yeah. just got one. He's been loving it. He's been loving yeah. it. Those are the companies that are just scared of bucks. bamboo. Apparently, like Creality had a full on crisis meeting after the X One came out. No surprise because they realized their market is done. Especially now that Bamboo has the A1 series, yep. which I feel sorry for anyone who bought the A1 Mini because, oh my God, $100 price difference for a much better machine. You know, once well, they fix maybe the, the A1 issues, Minis are probably not all that <laughs> mad Yeah, the now. A1s don't catch fire. So yeah, well, that, wait like, a minute, wait a minute. Hasn't yet. It likely uses yet. the same yes. cable. True, true. Hasn't yet. True. I, I, hasn't I, yet. I, all the small, everyone stopped using their A1s. There's nobody posting on the Bamboo subreddit saying, screw the rules, I'm still using my A1. No, there are some um, people that, that I saw I know. I, in the Polymaker Discord. I'm like, you know you should stop using that printer, right? Yeah. I know that you feel it's safe. But it's it's not. Please don't. Yeah. So the thing is, it, it's it's not bamboo that should be is everyone's everyone always is like, oh, Prusa's is scared of bamboo. It's like Prusa's is doing just fine. Believe me, yeah, they're they doing don't. just fine. It's the competitors that are freaking the cloners because all of a sudden they used to be you just be able to shit out a cloned bed flinger V wheel bed flinger every six months. You come out with a slightly different model. This one has a flex plate, but we took away the bed sensor. The next one has the bed sensor, but we took away the flex plate. You just keep changing the parts up every now and then. You keep selling. You make some decent money. Now, holy shit, we actually have decent competition in this space Yep. for an entry-level machine yep. that just works and requires minimal tinking. Like, like I know Chep loves his, his Enders, and he got some vindication there because he went to go check out the A1 at a micro center and left with an Ender 3 V3 or whatever. And the A1s got recalled. And he's like, we should have listened to you, chap. We should have listened. You knew. You knew. Um, oh, I mean, it, he would have been a cool guest those... for this, too. Maybe I should have asked Chep to be on here. <laughs> uh, Chep's a great guy. He is. Uh, yeah, like, I've, I've had a few chats with him at some rep rep fest. But um, those are the companies that are scared right now. Because now the, the, the bar has been lifted. And you can't just shit out Ender 3 clones. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the Ender 3 is going to stick around forever because it's last I heard um, the bone stock, like the $99 Ender you can buy at Micro Center. Yep. It costs like Reality like 20 bucks to make that thing. Yeah. Oh, well, what, it costs, when, when it costs nothing. They have, they have, when you're buying tens well, of thousands of units. Yeah. They've produced well over a hundred thousand. You have hit your yeah. economies of scale and that, oh. and that printer has gotten uh, really, yeah. I, I, I would hedge a bet that their largest, like, Th their largest expense in those machines is shipping. Oh, probably. Yeah. That's why. Um. So for those that don't know, the, the bamboo machines are region locked. Do you know yeah. why they're region locked? The machines are like, I think, 150 to $200 US cheaper in China because they don't have to ship them overseas because they have to ship it fully assembled in a big box. So the shipping cost is like 150 to 200 So they're region locked because they are worried about somebody just flying over to China walking into a store, buying a Seacan's worth of, of printers and shipping them back themselves and undercutting them. That's why they're region lock them. It's to prevent somebody from buying a printer over there for a much cheaper price and reselling it. I'll keep my tinfoil hat off for why, why I really believe the region locking has been used. But um, yeah, uh, the that, region that's... locking does exist. We showed it to you in the log files. It's yep. there. Oh, it does. Um, it does exist. I know because people have, have like, hey, can this like uh, on my X one plus video? Hey, I bought uh when I was in like Thailand or whatever, and I or Taiwan or whatever, and I bought um uh, and I moved, and then now it don't work anymore. Can I? Can I? Will this fix it? I'm like, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I man, I, I don't know. You know, it, it's it is interesting to see how different companies approach it, right? I think Creality what? doesn't really approach product testing; they just release a new model. <laughs> they they, <should> really. <laughs> they <should> release a <laughs> new model. Um, you know, it it, it we look at uh, we look at. Flash Forge, Cheaty, Kitty, however the hell you want to say it. Cheaty or Kitty. It is C H E E C H E E is the that's what I was told it was pronounced. Cheaty. As, is okay. Cheaty. So it I, I think they do a little bit more product testing, but even even the their their X plus line, that had a major revision to it. They did. 
They had they a did. major revision. And they were honest because they got feedback from testers. They said, yep. we, w- we would like to see this a little bit different. And so they changed it. They moved away from the carbon fiber. They went to steel, which is much yep. my preference because it's easier to deal with. Yeah, um, it'll last longer. It'll it, last it, especially way Especially because you can't repair it. Because even the Cheaties have the same issue the Bamboo does with user serviceability, well, where the whole gantry is... Their machines are so much use. plastic. I So much plastic. Yeah. I, that's like the it, one it thing I don't like is. about that machine. And the no. spool holder and the USB port are in a terrible no. spot. They should have moved it. Stop putting spool on holders the on the back, back of the machines. God! Like, it, oh, you know what you do? Why? Your machine has a metal frame. Just put tapped holes on all the sides so the user can put the spool holder wherever the hell they I want. Mean, to be clear, Peel Poly didn't do that either. They put it on the side. <laughs> Yeah, true. There are no other at least places it's on the to side. mount it. Yeah, and technically, you probably you can put the spool. You can mount a, 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 a you can put a spool holder anywhere you want if you have like and a you know, standalone spool. That's holder. probably something we should we should talk to Mark about. Is that they should have tapped holes in the frame, or, or at least holes where you could put in that reverse Bowden connector everywhere? Because like I, I may or may not have drilled some holes in my frame. Yeah, or have one on the top, right? And those and because like I would look at those things and say these are printer farm level machines having a spool on the side means I can't butt the masses to elbows. I, I need yeah. them tight. So my spools are all hanging off the front. They're actually hanging yeah. on the metal support rack behind me. And there's a plastic part. And I use Prusa spool holders because they can hold two kilos. And I've had it this way for a while. So I've always yeah. been using their spool holders. But Prusa, on the, machine, the XL has the extending spool holders. Why does nobody else do that? That's And it's it's a brilliant idea. But at the same time... Yeah. I don't like that. Pull it out. I, I, telescope. I wish. Well, and, and now you can. So now, now Prusa has the ability to say all my spools are on one side, uh, where stock configuration has it on both sides, and that's better. And the way the spools are mounted, like the spools are mounted so so they stick out the least. Where the PO Poly, it's like you have that full nine, ten inch diameter spool, whatever it is, uh, sticking out the side where I can't put something else next to it. So yep. I know for a fact, I will not be keeping that stock spool holder. That thing is going no. away as soon as that printer comes inside. Um, it's an okay one. Like at first, stock it's, okay. spool holder, it's got bearings. It's got in bearings. It. Yeah, that was nice to see. Um, but the problem I have is a machine that big, like here, here's my thing. Large machines like that need to be designed to take five kilogram spools, in my opinion. Like I've got on, on my, on my bench. I don't know if I have a photo of it here. But when I was doing, I've been doing a bunch of stuff with the five kilogram spools from yeah. a, uh, of ASA from Pio Poly or um, um, Polymaker. Polymaker. And um, the way I have it set up is I basically have um, a space between the printers that I can put two of those big spools. So one feeds yeah. one machine, one feeds the other. And it's great. But like these are full size 300 plus build volume machines. And a one kilogram spool is nothing. It's not enough. Yeah, you'll, like you'll burn through it fast. So, if you're mach- if you're shipping a machine that has a, th- a, a 300 or above bed and it can only hold one kilogram spools, no, stop that. It needs to be able to hold at least a three kilogram spool. Well, and, and um, I think the Prusa method actually is one of the yeah. better ones where it's just the extending the, the extending one. So if you want yeah. it to hold one, you can. If you need it to hold more, you can. Yeah. Like here. So I had to feed mine. Um mm-hmm. This I know a, that piece of plastic. That's that's the, that's the cover. Yeah. That's the covers yeah. for the rails. So, the yellow so plastic. Prusa <laughs> sent me some filament to try out. This is some Prusa Mint recycled PLA. It's like a two kilogram spool or something like that, um, or one point six or something like that. But it, it wouldn't fit on the spool holder. Yeah. So I had to go dig out the old school. Like I think this came with a king rune, and then I had to put a clamp here because this is sitting on a bench. It'll get pulled above the, the machine, and yeah. as the machine was pulling, it was sliding this towards the edge. So I had to like put a bar there to prevent this from sliding off. If if the machine had a spool holder that would fit it, I wouldn't have to do that. Yep. Yep. I agree. I, I agree 100%. Yeah, it, there there, there yeah. should be better ways. That That's how I had to do it to feed this machine. It's because you can see the spool holder right there. Yep. But the spool won't fit on it. Yep. So it's, it's you it is could, what it is. You could add extensions and all that. But yeah, at, at some point, it would be nice yeah. to see. And, you know, it, it's very obvious that is an off the shelf part for P.O. Poly. It's oh, yeah. not like they're custom designing that where a lot of their other stuff is very obviously custom machined yeah. in factory there. The frame is a, I'm assuming they're off the shelf extrusions, but they just they are never off been the used. shelf extrusions that they do have custom size with uh, yeah. anodized coating on it. And it's beautiful for reference. I, I actually love the the appearance of it. Um, yeah, but there, there are certainly some things that we look at from a testing perspective and say, this could be better. 
And from all the times that I've done beta testing for companies, we've done probably less than you have, but I've, I've, I've done quite a few. Peel Poly has been one of the only companies that has been as responsive that I was looking for. Hell, they've been more responsive than I was expecting. And so that is, that's pretty good. And it, it, it's what gives me hope and will let me preliminarily say, I have faith in these machines. Yep. Right. Because if, if you know, it is a, obviously it is a first revision product and we do have pre-production units that do have issues. Yep. They are working through fixing those issues and they are yep. actively involved in the testing and they're taking their time. And again, as soon as the stream ends, I'm going to the garage. I'm going to freeze because it's like 12 degrees out there right now. Jeez. Um, and I've got to go. I've got like an eight page PDF to, to just knock through. Okay, try this, try this, try this, try this. Make sure this is good. Try this, try this, try this to try and fix my issue. And it, it's like, that's some of the best service I've ever gotten. Yeah. From a machine. Same here, right? It. So. I, I will say it. I'm sure if P.O. Poly isn't listening, they will be because Mark's aware that we're doing this. Uh. Uh, we And we've told you privately, but I'll tell you publicly, too. You're doing a damn good job at this. Thank you for including people that are not only, you know, just going to test it and that's it. Including people that you know are going to be hypercritical. People that are going to call out the BS when they see it. People that are also going to assist you in solving those problems. That kind of stuff is such a big deal when it comes to product testing. And it enables you as a company to do less product testing. Because those people that are hypercritical, that are content creators, that know what they're doing, there's not a lot of them out there. And they are great to be able to put on a team as long as they can work with the rest of the team. But they're great to put on a beta testing team because you do need a devil's advocate. You do need someone that's going to look at this from the perspective of a first-time buyer that has never used 3D printing before, that's gotten this machine, saying, this doesn't work for me, this doesn't work for me, this doesn't work for me. And the company is taking that to heart and fixing it. So A plus where it is given, 100%. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They're doing a very good job. I'm very happy to be involved in the beta testing for this thing because... It, 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 I, I don't really I haven't really done a ton of beta testing for other printer stuff other than Vorons for the most part. Um, Dude, I was almost giddy when I got when I got the DM saying, hey, we're going to send you one. I'm like, yeah, it's like yeah, it's oh, a beta too. test this. I wanted to beta test this machine so bad. It's not about getting the free printer. I will happily give Mark the money yeah. for it. I don't care. Um, I don't I have a budget be... for it right now. <laughs> I, 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 I'm a, I, I, I've, I've completely blown my budget for I, a lot I, of stuff. I 100% agree there. I'd have to pay for it personally. But I I believe that Mark understands that I'm going to be critical, but I'm going to be constructive. And I have, man, it, it is, companies take note, right? Those, those of you that aren't doing great product testing, take note. P.O. Poly setting a damn good example. And when when the, when the real printers do start shipping and we can actually talk about our entire experience within the beta test, I think that, you know, small manufacturers out there that are looking to understand what product testing looks like, you should take note because I think P.O. Yep. Poly is, is really kind of doing a bit of a masterclass in a first time FDM 3D printer beta testing group. I, I truly believe yep. this is a masterclass in it. And and they're doing stuff that's like it, it. They're not coming out with just a generic Quarks by bed flinger type machine that you know a million people have done. They're mm -hmm. linear motors, load cell tool head. They've got uh, they've done. It's there's what a bunch you'd of, want. It's everything yeah. that you'd want, right? So yeah, I I wish other companies would take the time and even look at delaying a product release because you're not happy with the testing rather than hitting that deadline. Um, but, but my short-term profit margin, my short-term profit margin, I got to keep the investors happy. Well, we see what happens when you care a lot more about short-term. In Well, let me rephrase that. We see what potentially happens when you potentially care more about short-term profit margins than you do actually testing a machine properly, right? Gotta get my Got to get it out for the holiday market. Yeah, and... You know, hey, with less than two weeks out, they were ranked best 3D printer of 2023. And eh, that 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 it that reeks that reeks to me of of problems. And, uh, you know, whatever, man, I'm, I'm, I'm here to say that while I do have my biases, as does everybody else, I can't be bought. I can't be bought. 
And anyone that says they can be bought for their opinion online like this, nah. Well, I can't be bought for a reasonable amount of money. Offer me a few million dollars. Oh, yeah. they're, you they're, know. They're, everyone has a price. Don't get me wrong. Everyone has <laughs> hey, a price. you know, for, for the amount of money that a 40,000 subscriber YouTube channel would get to do reviews, <laughs> like companies have offered us like $500 plus a machine oh, to do a positive review. Worth. And, you know, marked on the I list never of companies I won't review. work with. Yeah, you you can't. It's, it's, it's illegal in the States. You can't. By law, you can't do a paid yeah. critical review. It, it's like... I, uh, LTD did a video on it a while ago talking about like being paid for reviews and whatnot. Um, and they're also Canadian like me. Mm -hmm. So there's like laws in place, like U U.S. trade laws for like commercial, like yep. for uh, content. Um, if you are being paid to review something, you are you can't be told what to say. Correct. Like you can't go into a review that you're being paid to do and say like, oh, this printer is the best printer in the world if you don't believe it. Like I can, I can do a review and I can go, Hey, the Osmo pocket three is the best camera ever. And this is the only camera you should buy. But if I'm being paid by DJI to say that I'm that's illegal. Yep. If I say it of my own accord, I, I can say it, but if they paid me to say that that's illegal. Um, and again, you know, I hate DJI, but I keep buying their shit cause I keep making good shit. So. Yeah, I, I, I will say I, I, I own the, I own like five of their Gen ones, the Osmo Pocket Gen ones. Yeah, it's what we ran for for many years because the Pocket Three is awesome, and I'm sure the Pocket Three is awesome. I, if Although, I'm spending four hundred dollars, I'm buying a used Sony. Right. You don't want to know how much I spent Canadian on this. Yeah, I, I bought the Creator Combo. It was like a thousand bucks Canadian. Yeah, but like and that's just that's just the normal price. I, I, I look at it and say, especially when. When I was using my cane, there were many videos that included walking shots when I was using my cane. And that's why we bought the Osmo Pocket, because I could put it into a fourth axis and I could get dolly shots with something that literally fit in my pocket. Right. Like, oh, yeah, this got... is great. This, this is the whole thing right here. With the Gen 1s, you can get the fourth axis for them as well. Ooh. So now, now when you're walking, you'll have full dolly shots yeah. with it in. That was that's why I bought them. That's what was important to me is that I wouldn't let my disability, you know, impact the quality of the videos. Um, uh, Seb asks, don't you have to disclose? Yes, you do have to. Dis if it is a yes, paid you have review, to disclose. And anytime a video is paid, and that even includes like the company just giving you a free printer, you must. Uh, disclose there's a it. box on YouTube you have to disclose. Although I forget half the time, um, especially when I set up live streams, I'm horrible for it. But you have to click a box that says like, "Yes, I'm being compensated for this," and compensation includes even just being given the printer for free. Yep. So yeah, you you have to disclose. Which also, just because somebody's mentioned DJ has grown up. Um, so this is the Osmo Pocket Three to activate this and. In, in, by the way, I'm just bringing this up because it happens to be our favorite 3D printing company. Their entire engineering staff is former DJI. So the Osmo Pocket 3, you cannot use this unless you register it to a, a DJI account. Nope. When you turn this on, it gives you five chances to register it. It's like, oh, you can skip it now, but then you can only skip it four more times. What and happens you skip if it you five keep times, skipping it? Um, you can't use it anymore. You have, to, you have to register it to use it. So you have to create a DJI account. You have to link it to it. And on Android, you can't even download the app from the Play Store. Correct. Because yeah. it doesn't meet the security requirements. That's correct. It doesn't. So you have to download the APK directly from DJI. Yep. Sideload it on your phone. That's correct. Activate it. And that app stays active unless you disable it. That's I've gone correct. and fully uninstalled it because it just hoovers up all your data. It requires access to everything. So uh, you download the app. You activate your Osmo Pocket. You do this firmware update because again, you can only firmware update it through the app. Of course, you can't just can't just put a file on the SD oh, card. I wonder where we've seen all this GoPro. before. Um, and then the app it, it doesn't meet the security requirements to be on the uh, the Play Store due to data harvesting reasons. Um, so you have to disable the app unless you want everything on your phone to go to a server somewhere. Um, so yeah, again, um, our favorite 3D printing company is founded by all former DJI engineers. So you know cookie uh the cookie doesn't fall too far from the crumble or something i don't know i you know that's why i like x1 plus because I, I i can now sideload uh updates firmware it's yep. nice you can sideload the firmware my machine has never been online and yet i'm running 1.7.2 it's beautiful 
Well, look, man, we, we, we've we done well over yeah, two we ran and a half long. hours. Yeah, <laughs> go figure. The two guys that, that are known for talking a lot talk a yeah. lot. <laughs> hey, I do it for a living. It's I the ADHD living. stream. <laughs> but no, dude, seriously, it, guys, check out check out the Canuck creator. Uh, you know, Nero was awesome. We've linked to his I channel down his below. Um, I guess Steve has already started streaming. So when, when, when we wrap it up, go check out Steve build stream. That's linked below as well. Push everyone to Steve stream. I don't know do, uh, how to do that. Okay. In, in YouTube, uh -huh. um, it's in, you get in, hit the edit button. Yeah. And then there's like a forward or something. I, I can't remember if it's on the main page or like one of the two, there's like three, there should be three tabs on the side. One of them has an option to forge your audience um to it's it's like rating but it's not called rating um so when you end the stream it'll automatically push you to steve so you have to like put the link for steve's stream in there and I, it doesn't I've got always the work link. yeah um, see you both have to be following each other though that's the thing oh if he's not following me that son of a gun i know where he lives uh <laughs> <laughs> i just Search videos from other channels. I'm just gonna. So you should be able to drop the link in there. You should be able to drop the link in there. Hey, I got it. Save. There you go. So theoretically, you go. when you end this stream, everyone should get bumped over to Steve's stream. Oh, it's so cool! All right, yep. we're gonna give this a shot. We're gonna give this a shot. Uh, I've never done this before. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good luck and Godspeed, everybody. Like the stream if you haven't. Thank you all for coming out, guys. Check out Nero 3D as well. Uh, the the Canuck creator. Uh, his content is awesome. I want. I, I when I grow up, I want to be a streamer just like Taylor is, <laughs> uh, because you 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 really do have it. more as well. But I think we're gonna have to be moving our streams to Thursdays because. We, we, we there's a lot of time slots filled with people yeah, streaming nowadays. And I, I I can't I, I I can't compete with Modbot. I can't compete with you. I had to move my podcast from two o'clock now to eleven o'clock because of Steve. Uh, <laughs> I'm the one always moving, but that's okay. Did did it did it boot up inside the case? I don't know. It's uh... okay. It was well, vibrating. <laughs> like the stream. Support I didn't even know if the thing. Want. What is what is this doing? What are you doing? Is the mic on? I don't know what's going. On. That's kind of weird. Your case is vibrating. You might want to check. I don't check what's inside that case. Oh, I, I bad mouth DJI. They're on to me. Oh shit! Here we go. <laughs> nope. That's all we got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed this ADHD podcast, all about product testing with an asterisk of everything else as well. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Episode one hundred and seventy.